Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the very first episode of the Juan and Only podcast with your host, Juan Rivas. On this episode, I have my good friend come on, Marcial Pimentel. He's an entrepreneur on the rise with his e-com business, and he's here to share his tips and advice to grow your business and start your business, which is one of the hardest things to do. Now, beyond that, we also talk about what it makes or breaks a good business idea in the first place before you even take that decision. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned. On some other side topics that we covered, we talked about Google and Facebook, how they control the vast majority of your decisions and data. We also talk about YouTube's algorithm and how much we hate clickbait. We also talk about popular games coming up like Call of Duty and their previous scandals, as well as Fortnite, how even though it's a free game, it's been able to make over $350 million within a quarter. If all of this sounds interesting and you like the video or like the podcast, please leave a like or a comment down below and subscribe for new upcoming episodes. Like I said, this is the one and only podcast, and this is your host, Juan Rivas. I hope you enjoy it. I'm actually a company right now with Lane Hensley and Marcial Piment. Uh, what's your last name? Pimentel. Pimentel. Every time, uh, Mars. every time you present yourself, you always you always say with a with a Hispanic accent. Pimentel. Right. Bruno. But like when you say like Marcial, you always like, hey, my name is Marcial. Yeah, and then no one knows how to say it, so I'm just like, just <laughs> call me Mars. Just, just call, call me Mars. Mars. That's why you're pretty good. I like Marcial. your Marcial. I like your, your uh, uh, Instagram handle, uh, Mars, the real Mars. The real bar. Mars bar, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Funny, yeah. It, it basically, I got that when um, I first, first, first got on Instagram. I was like, oh, you know what? As a joke. I'm going to have like those like celebrity accounts where they're like, I'm going to like the real whatever, whatever. Mm. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to do that for me, you know, so you guys know it's the real the real, Mars Yeah, there's bar. no other Mars. <laughs> so that just became a giant joke. I just did that for everything. Right. Yeah, no. Uh, uh, isn't there someone else who's called Mars, Mars Bars? On YouTube? Right, right. Yeah, I'm is. fairly positive it is. He's like an Australian vlogger or I something. I and it, I only yeah. know about it because I would play Overwatch and people would be like, are you like the, the, the real actual Mars Bar? I'm like... Mm, yeah, she I trolled guess. Them. And then I like YouTube, and I was like, "What the fuck?" It's like some Australian YouTuber. Oh, right. is he beast though? He's like a, vo- he's like a vlogger. He, I never heard of him. I'm gonna message him like, "Hey man, this is gonna get really awkward really fast." <laughs> yeah, that's just Fine. it's either you let's, or me. Let's rewind a little bit. You play Overwatch? A little bit. <laughs> Ooh, what con- what system? Uh, PC. PC. Yeah. I'm all PC baby. Respect. Do you have a custom I'm PC? Stuck, I'm assuming. Stuck on yeah, console. Yeah, I, I built right it now. a while ago though. You started what? Stuck on console right now. Oh. My friends recently switched over from PS4 Overwatch to PC, and they're like, oh my god, like, the Anas and stuff are, like, ridiculously better, because yeah. it's more like... <laughs> You're more accurate, can pinpoint... Yeah, yeah. way faster. Yeah. Very it, fast. True, Anna's fucking hard to play regardless, though. Regardless of them? If you yeah, can, you have a lot of responsibility. Just hurt, because I don't have a shock mount. Gotcha. So as soon as you hit the, the glass, it'll be... Okay, okay. Can <laughs> you imagine? Ah. Uh, <laughs> it's more... Wait, but... but the Mars is just because of your nickname, right? right? It's not like... Yeah, it originally it was something... A long time ago, my <laughs> tag was something a lot dumber. Like, in junior high, it was like... I really liked James Bond at the time, right? Yeah. So, you know, it? like 007, right? <laughs> well, my birthday is the 27th, so I did 0027. Okay. Oh, nice. And then I couldn't figure out the front part, so I just did my initial. So it was MP 0027, right? Uh, the problem was, when you look at that, you're just like... Mpu twenty seven, <laughs> right? So I quickly yeah. had to, yeah. The first time someone said that, I quickly had to change it, and I was like, "All right, well, I'm over it." Yeah. So I just ended up doing, uh, I guess, like Mars Bar. That's Such crazy. an innocent, you know, design. Yeah. I was like, "Oh, it's cool." I was like, "James Bond is cool. I want to yeah. be cool. I'm gonna do like 007. Hey, Mpu, Mr. Yeah. Pooh twenty seven. First time like I came, that. first time someone said that, I was like. <laughs> That's nope, it. not my. Uh, well, Huge honestly, mistake. I thought the Mars was something related to anime, since mm-hmm. you're so involved in anime. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to ask you right off the bat, how did you get into anime? Man. That's a good question. Honestly, I think I started, you know, everyone starts with like Dragon Ball Z and like Pokemon That's when they're growing classic, up. Dude. But when I was growing up, they weren't really like anime to me. They were just like cartoons that I would watch. Right, right. Like, Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They weren't really like anime for me. I think what really like flipped the switch for anime for me was um, on Adult Swim, like late at night, they would actually play like uh, Eureka 7, like Code Geass, and then I didn't watch any of those, but the one that I actually watched that I got so like enamored with was um, Fooly Cooly. 
I've never seen FLCL. Any of those, I'm not yeah. gonna lie. None yeah. of these. Cowboy Cooley. Bebop, Inuyasha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Inuyasha, I watched yeah. a little. Yeah, yeah. I, I like that one actually. Yeah, uh, now Fully Cooley. So that one got me enamored because it's kind of etchy. Yeah. So it's like in between all the crazy slapstick humor, there's like, ooh, like just like really suggestive stuff. And Dude, so when I was a kid, wh- going, I was why like, is anime like that? Now I gotta ask that because keep in mind, I have no knowledge in anime beyond just like TV shows, mm-hmm. and it's every cult, once in a while. Culture thing within anime. Yeah. Uh, because I know in Japan. And I, th- if, I think it's Japan. I might be butchering this, but I think in Japan they have even uh, what's it called uh, soda machines where they have like uh, seductive women, like yeah. cartoons or whatnot. Like it's very the, open the over there. Now, to- I think more recently, like fan service is a thing, and like that's basically where like you'll have these like funnily like suggestive things because the people buying a lot of the merch and stuff are like, oh, that's my waifu. Oh, uh, I want to see, or right. you know, just general titty lovers and stuff. They're like, oh, I love it. And, but it's, it's crazy. Like I, and it's crazy. Like and it's art, you know. Like yeah, the problem. Yeah, at the same, like, same time. <laughs> well, okay, but imagine that here now. <laughs> no, they, yeah. they would probably yeah. be like a movement saying like against that, like women. No, uh, no, that's uh, the funny feminist. thing. Some of my friends are kind of scared to say like they like anime in public or whatever because of that, like that Stay idea of like people who don't yeah. even watch anime. They're like, oh, so you like big titty anime women mm. just like prancing around? It's like, no. Do you get that? I watch. I only watch high school, uh, what is it, DXD ones? There's a fine it, line, but it's yeah. not a really bad one, though. No, no, no. There's, the... there's obviously, like, a lot of mature ones. And yeah. Do you get that ones. a lot, though? Like, when you say anime, I'm into anime, they're like... Just check it out no, on Netflix. Uh, Netflix, usually, you'll have a lot of good... You Personally, from my experience, when I say I'm an anime fanatic, I don't get the response of hentai, right? I get the... The balls deep like classics, Cowboy right? Bebop and Cowboy Bebop, uh, Vampire Hunter D. That was yeah. one of my favorite. Uh, Is Gundam anime. considered anime? Gundam. I don't I wasn't know. See, I'm, tra- I'm shooting. Oh, they they had it. Gundam yeah. in the fucking Spanish countries, bro. I watched. Uh, oh no, I heard. I, I watched it in Puerto Rico. Uh, which, yeah. which, by the way, I should, that's a great segue. You're from the uh, Dominican Republic. Were you raised there? No, no, no. I I was born in New York, but my whole family was there, so I would go there oh. like all the summers and stuff. And I see. Then I see. I'd be watching Bob Esponja. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, t- I tell this joke all the time, uh, how like. Because a lot of people would be like, hey, did you watch that movie? I was like, yeah, but I watched it in Spanish. Oh, and yeah. that goes like, like legendary. Yeah, it just, everything goes over your head because when it's in Spanish, legendary. like when they You'll translate the, the joke. The nuances in the language. Right, right. right. Yeah. Like it the just trans- goes over my head. The transition like kind of ruins it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and believe it or not, even though, uh, even though I say, say that in Puerto Rico, most movies that I watched in, in theaters were in, were in English. Keep in mm. mind. But, but like Spanish subtitles? Spanish for sure. Everyone, every single yeah, one has I mean, subtitles, which annoyed the fuck out of me because I'm not. Well, at the time, like people are trying to learn, I guess, and trying to keep up or whatnot, or kind of doing in between, which is Spanglish, which is like Puerto Ricans' unofficial language. Um, God bless. I, I rather, I rather just not see subtitles. I'll just pay attention to the subtitles all day long. But anyways, a lot of people uh, t- tell me, I like say, "Oh, did you watch that movie?" I say, "Yeah, yeah," in Spanish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, what I was gonna say is Anime, that. Uh, dude. God's chosen medium. I think it's on the. God's you have, you, chosen medium. Well, you you made a company based on anime. Yes. Yeah. So you must not only believe like heart uh, are passionate about this, but you see a, a a profitable niche. Yeah. No. I mean that's the thing. Anime like there are a lot of like fanatics. Like a lot, I know a lot of um like cosplayers, like people who dress up right, right. as the anime characters. That's huge. And then a, a ton of people love buying like anime merch when they're out shopping. Usually right. like figures. Maybe art, like wall scrolls and stuff. Right. And so a lot of the things that they would have would be shirts, right? Like just shirts about oh, different fun things. Absolutely, yeah. And so the thing is, at every convention, though, you see the same shirts. And, like, they're cool mm, and stuff, but it's, it's repetitive. Boring, it's variety, the same yeah. shirts. So, uh, that's a great opportunity. So do you market at conventions? I would. So that's the thing. Um, Game plan here. Like, if you guys yeah. want to get into the nitty gritty of the business, I was trying to explain the land, the the business model, whatever. But um, right. No, I don't go to conventions and shut, set up booths. All my friends are like, you should do booths, booths, booths. But it's like, yeah, I do a Facebook ad, I get like a thousand plus reach, and that's more people that would have passed by a booth at a convention for right. the most part. For less well, work, kind of. Kind of, and for the money wise, and then for the labor, like the fact that I I don't I don't I kind of had this as like a labor of love. So that I can be able to go to conventions, not so much so I could well, work at the conventions and stuff. Right. I got an argument against that right, well, right wait, off wait, the bat. Before you say that, I kind of, kind of admire that because it's like the concept of 
not wanting to work at a place because it'll ruin like the romanticism yeah. you have for that place. Like right? I want to have fun like, at the convention. Like don't work at a movie theater if you love movies, and it's gonna destroy well, movies for you. My right? argument is this right off the bat: is Money. that the whole reason you go, you make, bo- you not make, you host a booth yeah. or half a booth. Is that people feel attached to a physical yeah. company you see, whereas an ad, especially with what's going on now, which is like Adpocalypse or mm-hmm. last year, mm-hmm. where every every single time you breathe, there's a second ad yeah. always about something that you Google the <laughs> one next. I don't know what you're talking about, Juan. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna get an ad for Shiner right off the bat yeah. because we're drinking that. We're, to anyone li- uh, listening, we're drinking beer. What are we drinking with Shiner Bach? And I'm lis- and I'm drinking. It's like a something cider. This is brand new. I just tried it right on. Uh, Bishop Cider Company Apple Pineapple. We're good. It's very good. It's very very sweet. See, uh, we're next doing be- an advertisement in the middle of you talking. Yeah, yeah. I didn't mean to actually, but uh, what, uh, what I was saying is yeah. that that's why people go to conventions and have booths. Also, mm-hmm. it's yeah. an old school way of doing it, but the physical uh, connection to build that experience. For example, you have Juan McGee going to the to the convention and they're having a blast. They buy one yeah. of the T-shirts and it, it now has a memory attached to that right. shirt. Right, yeah. No, that's a big thing too. You'll see a bunch of cosplayers. And so I know a couple cosplayers that have had like booths at conventions where they'll be invited as guests. And that's like the whole reason. It's like they'll have their booth there. They'll right. sign, sign prints and stuff and you meet the cosplayers. Exactly. So it's a lot more the creators. into the connection. So there's definitely a point to that where like if I just do ads or whatever, no one really sees the me yeah, or the see, people. They see your product. They're just like, oh, there's an ad or whatever. I don't right, fucking right. But I, I feel through like, it. especially here, that just gets into the whole local versus me targeting a bunch of people in the U.S. Like, are also right. Well, well the good they, thing they, about they, ads they, is mm-hmm. obviously the way you're doing it. You're doing Facebook marketing and uh, Instagram, Instagram marketing, which my little two cents on the side is uh, consider Reddit. Reddit's a great place for mar- uh, for advertisement. Yeah. Um, but anyways, when you advertisement work, giving value, because if you don't give value, they'll just like, right, right, stomp you out. Uh, and right now, uh, uh, it's called weave shirts, right? Weave shirts, weave yeah. shirts. And I think you told me this before, but to those listening, what does weeb mean, or where does it come from? Like at first, I thought it was typo. <laughs> so the etymology of weeb, um, <laughs> it stems from uh, weeaboo, and uh, weeaboo is a derogatory term origin- originally. Originally used perhaps on 4chan and internet forums for people who are <laughs> You're burning this. very <laughs> obsessed with Japanese culture. It's the people who were like, I wish I was born in Japan because if I was born in Japan, Japan has everything amazing and I would have been <laughs> <laughs> So you would call someone like that a weeaboo, right? Weeaboo. You shorten it and now you got weebs. And then uh, Netflix is taking on anime. Everyone's taking on anime. So, so anime is arising Anime is going to be... I mean, it's always been big. I don't mean huge. to be condescending, be but I'm mean, saying as far as mainstream, mainstream acceptance... Definitely, definitely, definitely. It's like a subculture of nerd culture. So right now, everyone and their mom is like, I love Game of Thrones and Marvel movies, right? Yeah, That's right. nerd culture, comic books, etc. Even deeper in the rabbit hole are the weebs. Yeah, so yeah. the weebs are here hiding, but slowly <laughs> but and surely from like Netflix and stuff. So Netflix is doing a lot of original animes, and I don't know if you guys have heard of Netflix... Kind of uh, big. Dude, I don't know. Kind of big. Is it like so they're Hulu? doing Netflix <laughs> original? They're joke. doing <laughs> Netflix original anime. So Netflix okay. is seeing that, like, hey, you know, we could probably do some, get our own corner of this weeb market. Well, that's awesome. So weeb doesn't, for example, like right now the shirt you have on, it's a uh, what is it? What, <laughs> when, uh, when's the uh, hentai, hentai panel? panel. That's yeah, that's very yeah. You need to know that. Uh, but uh, your other shirt, uh, it's it's obviously anime. But so we doesn't necessarily. It's not. How do I say this? Like it's not concentrated. It can be anything anime related. It doesn't have to be specific. I mean, it's it's like someone in that culture, you know. Right, right, like right. Someone, if you're, if you're like a, who who uh, to me a weeb is someone who watches anime with Japanese subtitles. Wow. Well, not, My not cousin, Japanese subtitles. So sorry, everyone sorry, sorry. who watches English, not, not even with the English subtitles. Just Japanese audio. Is okay, you're crazy. Say. No one, no one watches anime raw. But no, they do. No, wait, wait. No, I know pe- there are people who want to like my cousin, learn Japanese. My cousin, yeah. for sure. No, to learn so, Japanese or? Yeah, there's a lot of people that do it, man. Yeah, yeah no, yeah, it's yeah. good to, if you're trying to learn. But or even more so, who do that? Japanese audio, and they have the English subtitles. Yeah, subs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and because uh, they, they're purists, I like to call them because. They're like, oh, when you listen to the the English audio, it destroys it's the true destroys. meaning behind the dialogue. Which yeah. I feel bad because I I actually know uh, uh, 
someone who does dub for an anime. So Funimation, if you guys have heard of, of it, yeah, Funimation. It's in Dallas. That's that's offensive. Like, it. It's in Dallas, oh, and so man. I have a I know a guy that I, I met that. through other friends. I know a guy. He's actually a voice actor for a fairly popular anime Haiku, and he's one of the like voices, and he like drives no up shit. to Dallas to do. Like, so voice he anime. has that he's super cool. radio host voice. He's awesome. No, he's super sick. He's super sick. That's but awesome. um. Fanboying yeah, really aside, super sick. He's terminal right now in the hospice. Fanboying aside, right? Weebs, we're gonna we're gonna be big. I'm trying so, to. That's like my mission statement. Is like bringing nerds mainstream. Like nerds are cool. Like we're the new cool, and people right. don't realize that. And people are like closet weebs and closet nerds. They're like, oh, I don't. By know. By hiding it, they feel they feel hiding, and they're like, oh, but I, but I watched the last. I, I love Death Note, and I love all this anime. But I, I so you think them. like it's it's. At, at what most people feel like that like they're kind of like frowned not frowned upon but kind of like hidden in the closet yeah. like alright yeah. stay a lot of people don't, don't kind of get it I just want to make a side statement I love Death Note I hate the uh, no live action live human yeah, yeah, live yeah, action yeah, yeah, yeah. my coworker uh, today said oh we watched the live action I was like oh uh, man. man I don't know they destroyed that. it I I respect Netflix but I think they're moving too fast right they're not okay. producing quality most of the time or the shit they produce they like, need to, I if mean, you look they, at their track record, yeah, eighty like percent Netflix is garbage originals. Mm. And then you get some cherry pick. You get the cherry pick through, right? Hey, Lee, get, can you stop banging? Him? Oh, sorry. So you get the devil man crybaby. Yeah, yeah. Ding 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 ding. Yeah, crybaby. Sorry, he's not. You know, he's not well equipped no, 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 for this podcast. Man, crybaby. Huh? Devil man crybaby. They did a Netflix did an original that was pretty popular for a little bit. I don't know if people still talk about oh, it, I but did, it was... I think I've seen that, but uh, it's off the original it's games, right? It's fucking crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the, yeah. The, yeah, yeah, the original series and stuff, it's crazy. Oh, and it was a series, it's been a game? Yeah, I think they did Castlevania. Ooh, Netflix a did uh, Castlevania anime. And I actually like four love that. Four or five episodes. Yeah, it was, it was a mini good. like series kind that of thing. Sick. Well, they should have more seasons. So basically right? what we're trying to do is convert you to watch anime and stuff. Oh, I'm already subscribed before we go. started this. <laughs> but I do want to keep uh, going back to the business. Okay, yeah. So in theory, for your week, I don't mean to throw a nugget at you. I don't know jack no, shit no, no, hit about me, hit anime. Hit me, hit me. But would you like do like, how do I say this? Like kind of like meme shirts regarding anime like would you make it like a cartoon that would be unique to weep shirts kind of like your logo which i love um but kind of like would you make how do I, you know like a, like, I, a, I made, like a brand like just shirts off the brand and not so much like the culture shirts about like my mascot well, like the, the mix them so so for example if if i were you and again i don't know jack shit this is just my pure ignorant opinion I would try to make some type of character associated with weebs or some type of like type of characters. Okay. For example, if you saw um, figures from uh, Final Fantasy, you saw one dude from Final Fantasy. Yeah, like you kind of already know the pattern they follow for all the other yeah, characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not the same, but that's kind of what I want to mean. So when you see Zora, Zora I think is his name. Uh, Zora. Zora. Yeah. Well, it's not Zora. Right? Zora part of Final Zora, Fantasy? Zora. Zora. The one right. with the fucking spiky. No, wait, that's from Kingdom Hearts. That's a Kingdom yeah, Hearts. That's yeah, why yeah, I'm thinking about Raikou right? or like Cloud. Sorry, sorry. Well, cloud. I know so cloud. just say Cloud. I always just say Cloud for everything Final Fantasy. So yeah, Cloud. So, yeah. So, so exactly. Cloud. My point exactly. So they have this kind of like style, character, style. exact style. So for example, when I saw your logo for Weebs, yeah. or Weeb shirts, I was like, that looks perfect. Mm -hmm. And obviously, uh, it's not like you have multiple different like types of animal or whatnot. Yeah. But it, my suggestion, and which again, I don't know jack shit. I keep saying that, but I would do like kind of like a set of characters, and the shirts would be those characters doing something ass part shit. of the culture. Mm. For yeah. example, like this shirt Nibulate looks perfect. the characters to be yeah. a part of the okay. brand. I can see that. Like for, I see this oh. shirt. It's funny, but I don't see the weeb shirts I think, branding. I think it's because a delicate there isn't territory you're someone, stepping on. Someone, you don't want to manipulate the characters too much where they're not the characters anymore or trying to... Like embed his brand. Right no, but I, I see what he's saying. If it's yeah, like, if it's like my yeah. mascot, and it was just like watching fucking like anime, it was like eh, and shit like right. that, or something like that. You can I, make I see what you're saying. Character. Just having more a cohesive like art style or a cohesive um, designer theme across right. other. Sh we, um, well, it's so that people have some can build one, a relationship. One cool with. thing that won't like fuck up the characterization of certain anime characters will be. You know, like you can line up your favorite characters to sit on a couch and y'all just watch it and in the middle will be your weed mascot or something, right? And mm, the right. rest are just sitting on the couch watching anime, you know. Right, right. But That'll the reason I say this is safe. because and I'm taking a stab in the dark, but I would imagine when it comes to the anime subculture or culture, sorry, and you go to these conventions when you wear where you're not cosplaying 
mm-hmm. and you just say fuck it i just want to wear a 20 dollars which shirt, is a right? jo- which is a big part of what i was going for originally yeah so in that sense you can make a subculture in anime called the fellow weeps or whatnot right whatever they're, they're going to be called right mm-hmm. and you can associate whatever characters you create for weep shirts with that movement and subculture okay well, and, well he won't be creating this term it already exists he will no, no, be no, not the kind term. of he'll be embracing the term he's gonna make a character associated with the word weeb is my is my point his own character so like a new just something like a like just basically taking my mascot and making it kind of stand for i haven't seen your mascot what was your mascot it's a cute little fun fact man i could tell y'all a horror story of my first getting started where i was getting a graphic designer to design my logos dude please tell the first oh my god so it was a valuable lesson in uh graphic design like choosing how to hire graphic designers and making sure that you always get a this is the beginning this is the first money i ever spent towards actually making my brand okay okay the first step very first transaction ever on like fiverr lesson learned in other words oh yeah 50 bucks 50 52 bucks i'll never get and i swear to god i was showing my (laughs) girlfriend this recently it is was it was a fucking like Nick Jr. like dropout character. Like it didn't even make it to a pilot episode of like a Nick Jr. show. Yeah. Like it was trash. Like trash, 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 trash. You trash, don't trash. have a sketch or anything or I could I could uh-huh. I could show y'all, but it was so bad. And so I'm like telling her, I'm like, you know, this isn't exactly what I was going for. Like it's too happy. I was looking for like a mascot to be like More fun, serious. playful, like ha fuck you. Like the one you have right yeah. now is amazing. Yeah, I don't I, no, no, no. And I didn't know we'll it was get to that, but I, like so that didn't work. I send them an edit of like what I was looking for. Nothing, nothing, nothing. And then at that point, you know, I'm just called it like, look, it's obviously not going to work out. And then I chalked it up as like, all right, I learned. Like when choosing graphic designers, always look for samples of their work and make sure that that art style matches exactly what you're That's looking for. Because if not, yeah. there's a ton of graphic designers out there. When I found the graphic designer who did my shirt. It was that style I was looking for, and I knew that they would be able to kind of tweak it to make. So, so a lot of people do like Western style, but I was looking for more like that anime, cartoony, that yeah. cartoony, but more anime Eastern. It has style. that detail in it, yeah. The Eastern style, and so with him, it was like awesome. First dog though came out like a Chihuahua, and I was like, hey, can you do like a Shiba Inu instead? And um, which we all, Inu. yeah, which Shiba we all Inu. know what that the is. Japanese, the Japanese meme dog, like um, like the dog, the dog, Doge, the Doge. Okay. Uh, like Doge, about, like yeah. oh, like the yeah. fucking meme that's dog. Perfect. That's yeah, a- and so they changed it to that, and I'm like, so perfect. see, that, that's those are great lessons. I'll for show you. I'll show you all the picture. Start a it's company. fucking Nick Jr. Dropouts. But uh, yeah, so you, lesson well learned in just choosing designers. So use Fiverr.com. Yeah. Uh, no, that's perfect. I saw it. Oh, like what did it say? Catch me what? Catch me at the Catch me at a con, which is my nice. original tagline. This is the edit that I proposed. You can do like a 3D version of that dog. That's what I'm like, thinking. I'm thinking of getting nice. that same designer to do. Okay. Y'all can't see it. Well, maybe. Oh, no, I'll, I'll, you'll send it to we me. Can, we can put it. a he's, link. He's gonna do the couch idea I had with all his favorite anime characters on the couch with his mascot dog. It's fucking. Yeah. And they're gonna be watching. And then this is Dude. the best part. At the very end, when we weren't getting anywhere, I was like, "Look, it's not working out. I'm sorry, whatever." So they do this. Oh wow. Uh, Let me see. <laughs> oh, wow. That's a complete different completely change. Completely different. I was like, all oh, right, yeah, wonderful. Have a wanted. nice day. So, but that's fifty-two dollars lesson learned. Yeah, as most entrepreneurs learn. Yeah, you're gonna uh, spend a lot of money and you're gonna make. Of course. So hopefully so some. Going back to that idea because I might have some viewers or listeners that are interested in the entrepreneurial mindset. Yeah. What got you into thinking and turning this into an actual company? Like, my, obviously, like what pushed me to actually start? Right, or? right. Because uh, a, a lot of it, it could be inspiration. It could be just said, fuck it, let's make some money. Or it could be just let's try it out. Right. I mean, I'll let you talk about it. But most people have a lot of ideas. And like most people think that ideas are everything. When in reality, ideas are worth shit no, if you don't execute on them. Doing, and I'm mm-hmm, just yeah. preaching as yeah. if I... I own a business or anyone that yeah just right. follow gary v <laughs> yeah no, no, that's, that's a good so, so so you want me to kind of go into like what actually pushed me on the edge to start or what was my idea inspiration for Take starting? Us to the origin what gave you the idea okay. and what led you to push through so it? this is appropriate because uh it's actually close to the one year ish anniversary of me my inception of starting so basically all of last year or last year towards um, kind of like July around my birthday, a little before my birthday, I was like, you know what? Your birthday's July? Yeah. When? End of July. Oh, mine's 14th. Dope. Yeah, I know. Your birthday's like two weeks before mine. That's dope. Yeah. Anyways. Oh, wait. But um, 
So I was like playing with the idea of starting my own business. It, I think it started because I read um, Four Hour Work Week by uh, Tim Ferriss, which is book. basically all about starting your own business, starting your own online business. Oh, so you actually went through and read some material and like that was that was a lot. I really liked him to begin with, I think, or mm-hmm. I read that book and started getting into it. Right. But I wasn't res- necessarily reading business books. That came a little slash during slash a little like dur- more during. Right. It's a great book. Makes that sense. book though, amazing book. That one was the one that get me to like, you know what? I could do this. Like I know, like with our degree, like CIS, computer information systems. I was like, I can do. Like I'm computer savvy enough to be able to work around trying to get started. And I was like, right. okay. And I kind of have a general idea of like, you know, I could do like anime kind of shirts and stuff. And so because what you like, if you go if you go back a little bit when I was saying, um, if you go to every convent, all the conventions I've been to, I've been to a lot of conventions during the last whatever, a few years, uh, uh, quite a few years. And so all the shirts were the same. And I'm like, dude. All these shirts are the same. So, I could come up with designs. So that's the quick, opportunity. I have, I have a quick question for you. Did you, thank you, did you find any inspiration going to convention for designs for your website? Uh, maybe some off the wall costumes that people are doing, or maybe some artwork that you saw during the convention? So that's, that's skipping a little ahead to when I was starting the website. But to answer it quickly, um, originally I wanted the idea of my website to be kind of like um, you're at a convention and there's booths. Mm-hmm. And so my storefront would kind of be like a booth at a convention. Mm. So, uh. so a lot of, when I first started, a lot of it was a uh, crowd shots that my friend had taken at different conventions right. to simulate like you were part of the crowd That's and cool. like you're at my booth at a convention. So that was That's your awesome. kind of your UI on your that website? Was my, that was my idea. And so right. getting started, I was thinking of tailoring it towards people who go to conventions and would want to buy that type of merch. Right. right. Nice. Yeah. But um, to bring it back, so if you remember before, when I was saying all the shirts at these conventions were the same, I'm like, dude, come on, I can do better, whatever, whatever. When I was at a convention, I went for my birthday. I went to New Orleans, and I went to a convention that was Amer- MechaCon, and I was just kind of walking around the merch stuff by myself, and I overheard two people. I guess some guy was complimenting someone on a shirt. He was like, oh, dude, that's a sick ass shirt. And you know, it was like a, it wasn't this, it wasn't, a, it was a shirt. I know he didn't get at a convention like i know he had like ordered it or purchased it because right. it was like a just like Custom an anime meat. face i think it was a girl from K-On. it was just like her right. face like a giant face and i was like oh man that's awesome and i was like you know what i need to just fucking do this because i i know that like if i could come up with cool stuff that people would really like i'm sure they would love it and they wouldn't have to be stuck buying fucking team rocket shirts and kirby shirts and have stuff. you met somebody a complete stranger in the streets yet that had one of your shirts no custom design that but i've told amazing. myself i've i've had one of those things where like driving to work super early in the morning where like i think about it and like when that happens dude i'm gonna get i'm gonna get real emotional i'm gonna come home and be like oh dude where'd you get your shirt and <laughs> I stuff i can imagine that's and what I'm it's gonna, about though like i'm gonna get oh yeah so I, I, so, I thought about it that's but, one of my things is like uh all right so uh I'm sorry. So going back, so a lot of people fail to find that business opportunity for yeah. growth, right? You saw it. You you noticed that a lot of people just have very repetitive uh, clothing and they don't have much variety. Right. Within a niche, which is already a plus, which is anime. Yeah. Because if I just made shirts for young people in high school, you yeah. know how oversaturated that is, mm-hmm. as opposed to attacking this particular niche, which right. is anime. You're people okay. So like that's anime. very lucky. That's very good. You can have that passion. You love it. You know how to do it. You're tech-wise uh, because of yeah. your degree. Yeah, it was kind of like a perfect storm of that kind of stuff. And um, even the entrepreneurial stuff, since we're learning a lot about project management stuff, just that idea of eventually I would have a team or eventually I would have to kind of make even documents to like right. understand processes and stuff. So yeah. it was just kind of that perfect storm of like I realized that our degree – while it's awesome for what we're doing and getting into a career and like an actual job, whatever, I was like, this is actually a lot of skills that are perfect for an entrepreneur in this like tech era, which was perfect when I hit the four hour work week. Mm-hmm. And it's all about starting like an online business. And that book was right. written in like the 2000s where the technology wasn't up to date and people weren't maybe as knowledgeable. Now there's so many more services to do what he was saying in that book yeah. to do it now. Definitely. And I was in a major yeah, for that. The platform you have now is Funny. perfect. Oh yeah, Fun, oh yeah, we can get into it. Yeah, but Fun so fact. what you're saying, so like it, it was a lot of that kind of things working together, like finding a niche and stuff. Right. So. I was going to say, uh, f- not fun fact, but fun, funny th- thing to hear is that I've read a few other books regarding like virtual assistants, yeah. which is kind of like what Tim Ferriss' book is based on, Oh yeah, about hiring people from the Philippines or people <laughs> from Fiverr to yeah. hire and do your th- stuff. Like outsourcing work? Right, outsourcing, basically. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah. Thank mm-hmm. you. But 
uh, a lot of people thank Tim Ferriss because they're like, oh, thank you. You gave us, you know, exposure and blew out of proportion. But yeah. a lot of other entrepreneurs are a little sour. They're like, uh, fuck this guy you because of it. him. Now I got to pay you three times as much for, yep. for the same guys. But well, there, depending on what you're outsourcing to, I've, I've been seeing a lot of backlash for doing that in terms of it actually costing more money, depending on your project. For small right, right, scale. Right. But, but for this case, I, I, yeah, yeah, I, I know we talk it. about yeah, when yeah. you hire someone for a full time. But even that, just having that personal in face communication sometimes can make a huge difference, mm -hmm. right? Than having a remote. So, again, going back, so you got the idea, you got the opportunity, yep. you know how to start it. What led you to pull the trigger? And when, you know, the hardest part when pulling the trigger is not making a website for free it's when you pay a penny pay the money put a money into yeah. your business or your time when you you know when you're like i have to study for a test but you know what i'm gonna do this weeb company right now what was that what led you to that it felt it gave you that confidence i think it was a lot of it was a lot of uh uh it was a lot of um so there are resources out there so on reddit i recommend two subreddits uh the entrepreneur reddit subreddit I'm and I'm on that. more importantly, the Just Start subreddit. I think I have mm. that one. Which is, a, you, you can see where I'm going with it. It's yeah. a subreddit based on, you know, a lot of people who are trying to be entrepreneurs who have great ideas, but it's all about a subreddit where you talk about starting. You just mm. start. So, the stuff that you as an enthusiast coming into the game the first time will overlook, right? A lot of the process. Just, it's, it's not even that. It's just like, look, you know, you're... A lot of these people who are probably reading these resources, and that was me for yeah. before I went to the convention, like MechaCon for my birthday, and then like after, like or before, you know, I knew these resources and I kind of had this idea and I kind of knew more or less how I would want to do it. When I started reading some of that subreddit or some like more resources like that, a lot of it just kind of pointed to just start, begin the, the process. Yeah. So I think once I hit that that tipping point at the convention, I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna try to get into it between um so that was the end of july so like that august i think was starting to come up with like um okay well if i were to start i think i would like want to something like this or like mm -hmm. even coming up with like i think i want like some designs that for my logo or whatever to look like yeah. this it's fun and um i i paid for my first logo ever at uh in like the beginning of september so in that whole year month i get that whole month i guess i was like I gotta do it. I gotta do it. I gotta do it. But the big thing was at that convention. Where I was like, you know, I was overhearing them talking about the shirts. And I was like, you know what? I know I, I feel like I could provide more value and do this service. And I'm really passionate about it. Right. Right. And I, you know, I go to these conventions and I'm like, ah. Oh. And then I just in my head I pictured like people, they're done with their cosplay. They're like, I'm fucking tired. I'm over it. That just did like <laughs> yeah. two cosplays in a day. I brought like four cosplays for the week. I'm just over right. it. I just want to drink with my friends hotel parties have fun around in the hotels i'm just gonna throw on my shirt and it's gonna be cool ass design a wee fucking shirt and it's gonna be awesome and so i think all of that surmounted to the point where i was just kind of like you know i'm ready to spend the money to like look for designers i think i was looking on fiverr a ton for designers and stuff and then right. i found that first one that made my my nick jr character <laughs> i mean lesson yeah, learned, learned, did learns, it, so. learns I, I don't know if that answered but it, it was something like there were a lot of resources and then i finally got to one that was like you know what stop reading right. stop so, reading stop getting your head just begin just a little just question start. uh on the side so when you first started is there to quote the famous Gary Vee here, you know, the cloud and dirt concept. Right. I think a lot of entrepreneurs are stuck in the cloud aspect, right? Like they're romanticizing the concept of starting this business mm -hmm. and they're, they're not really looking at the nitty gritty details of actually getting started. Right. Were there things that kind of transform of your idea of starting a business as you're actually getting down to the dirt level and doing stuff? Um, I would say, well, so this last like, for the last couple of years, really, I've been trying to, uh, not like super self-improvement, but I've been reading a lot of books and I've like noticed, trying yeah. to get into more kind of like, you know, not even just podcasts, but more resources just in general. So I've had that, I've cultivated this mindset of like, you know, kind of like future thinking. For the longest time, I've always thought of like, I'm trying to set up my early young years for the mm -hmm. future and stuff. Yeah. So I never really had a mindset of I couldn't do it. I try to even instill that in friends around me is like, you can do it, you can do it, just shut up, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. Mm -hmm. Like there's nothing stopping you. So I think a lot of the, the thinking and me starting was just, um, you know, I knew everything that I needed to do to start. 
Right. You know, I've collected all the resources and then exactly. amassing more resources wouldn't have helped me do anything if I wasn't actually executing what executing on anything. Mm -hmm. So right, just even exactly. taking the tiniest step, I think just just looking at the designers and thinking, oh, if I were to start, what designers would I pick? Mm -hmm. Just for a logo. Just, just for a logo. Role, yeah, yeah. What would I even pick? And then picking like, okay, I think I would even pick this one. And it's like, okay, if I did pick them, mm. what would my logo look like? I penciled out a logo and I was like, okay, I think I want this. I scanned it so I would have it there ready. And then it just got to that point where it's like, okay, I think I'm going to message them. Just message right. them and see. And you'll notice it's just a lot of inching, inching, inching baby steps, baby mm -hmm. steps, baby For steps, sure. and not psyching yourself out. I well, think a really oh, it's yeah. So the, you're inching, but those inches are huge steps you're yeah. really making. Yeah, you know? yeah, you're, yeah. You're, you're just getting you're saying, on the website and stuff like say. Because a lot of people, I'm sure, they'll stop at that point. I was like, I can't do this. Like, I, that's, what am that's I gonna do? What am I gonna do? Babe. As soon as I always talk about this, as soon as it take it takes a certain level of effort, about ninety percent of people drop. You continue. Again, when there's a certain level of effort increases, another ninety percent is gonna drop. So you just gotta keep pushing. Exactly. And it sounds very I, I think redundant. He's very practical too, because he said it himself, he was inching towards it, right? He wasn't right. being yeah. over enthusiastic and taking huge leaps that weren't the, the, practical. He right. was actually And I'm know, not gonna say it was super conscious. It was more so like this is kinda what I saw happening and then with the resources and stuff and then just kinda my mindset at the time. Like Anyone doing it can like anyone can do any of, of the stuff that we're yeah. doing. Like it's right. it's all a matter of doing it. But the, I think the reason like why it. I actually went into it is that like I got up to that point where I'm like kissing the edge of like oh man oh man oh man. And then it's honestly once you spend that first little bit, in my case at least, that just started the snowball going. It's like all right, I got this logo and now I'm talking to a designer for the first time and I'm like yeah. telling them edits right. and holy crap, this and designer you realize, sucks, the so I need to find thing, another designer. I'm sure the huh. beautiful thing for you is when you realize, not necessarily how easy, but how not hard it is yeah. to just continue. Yeah, people think it's like some crazy, amazing wall of like, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it. And it's like, there are tons of resources out there, and like getting started wasn't so difficult. Mm. Like, if you just kind of even try to map out a shitty game plan of what yeah. to do, like, if I have a logo, I can make my business, and I know I'm going to use Shopify as my platform, and right. I, I'm going to... A so spoiler. Uh, yeah. spoiler for a reason. You know, this, I think I think the is, I, I want to say this just this because um so let's say I did all that and then I was still stuck at the brick wall. I I don't think I was, but this is a good example of this of like actually starting. So I kind of hit a a wall with um, starting my actual store, like opening up and getting ready to open up, like paying the money for that Shopify store to be ready to open. And I think what did it for me was that um I was stuck on oh well, I only have so many designs. I only have so many designs, I can't open until I have so many designs. And you can see where that thinking would start going to, I can't open until I have four designs. I can't open until I have mm, more than that. I can't just, open, open, yeah, open, open. And, and then it got to the point, designs. it got to the point where I was like, no, I'm done. If I don't open this store, if I don't pay for the Shopify and I don't start it or pick a date, that was what, that was the big one for me. Mm, pick a date. I, I was like, I'm going to pick a date. I'm going to open. That's right. it. I'm not going to worry about however many designs I do or don't have. Now you're being practical. So I did you're February 1st. And you can see, line. I mean, there was a big lag. We hit Harvey, but that was another story. But like between August, September, uh, no, uh, October, November, whatever, all that. And I, I didn't only, I only opened up on February 1st of this year. So there was mm -hmm. a couple months in between of like designs and figuring out what the fuck I'm going to do. Of course. But I finally set that date of I'm going to start on the 1st. And then that was it. That was like, fuck, fuck, I'm going to open and people are going to be buying and I'm gonna, they're going to have to get <laughs> stuff shipped to them. And what if they need to return and all the crazy thoughts yeah. in my head. But I just kind of pushed myself. I was like, no, I'm going to open on the 1st. A lot of that That's good. Back. Uh, so, so. So that's great for pulling the trigger. So for anyone listening and watching, do you have any tips on resources? For example, a lot of people think that they have to go in it by themselves or without much research. So they can just ask Juan McGee again, say, hey, how would you set up your Shopify? Okay, just do this. When in reality, it, it, it's, it's not just knowing how to do it, but it's also the mindset it's approaching, like building this business. For okay. example, you obviously read Tim Ferriss. You've been reading Jordan Peterson. You've been reading other yeah. people as well. But beyond those, any other resource you recommend for people to learn how to properly start a business? So I think the big thing, if we're thinking like super high level, is kind of going into what you were mentioning earlier. Is like I happen to find a niche that I like. There are a lot of people who want to get into kind of what I do, the online like drop like drop shipping business, mm -hmm. and they're like, oh, I just want to sell like cat necklaces. 
So the thing is, yeah. on that super like high level, business. on the super high level, it was something I was passionate about. But there's also recognizing kind of like, is there a market for what I'm about to try to sell? Am I being biased or is it truly Am a market? I, is yeah. there actually something here that people would actually want to buy? Am I doing everything correctly? So as far as resources, it's making sure that you understand like, what is a niche? What is an yeah. audience? Right. What is stuff that people would actually want to buy? Are they passionate enough to actually buy? Are the people that I'm targeting people that would buy, not just mm -hmm. people who are passionate about a subject? Sure. I could target weebs that really love anime, but they don't send a single cent on actual merchandise. They just really I, like watching or whatever. I honestly think uh, your choice of what you're marketing is, is very um, well chosen because you have so much variety that you can do. Oh, and yeah. it's literally... The only constraints is your imagination at this point. Whatever mm -hmm. you convey to the designer to make mm -hmm. is what you can market and yeah. produce to and then, people. And I yeah. think that's a huge market. And we can, we can get into the designers I use now, but um, back onto like the resources of getting into it is that, um, so let's say you do pick something and you do start and you do start and you're like, okay, I'm going to start whatever. That doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be profitable. And so it's having that sense of like, okay, I'm selling these like pug bracelets Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's not working out and then getting discouraged and being like, you know, what, this entrepreneur stuff, it's not for me. It's not. Right, right. It's just there's no chance of getting into it. And so, you know, even my store right now, like we, we talk, we're talking about it, but like it's not super amazing. There's still a ton I need to learn and do for my store, period. Like I could think of a hundred different things, but I'm not discouraged. Like I'm going to keep going at it. And so there's that level of like, I believe in it. I really want it to happen. It's not just a one-off thing that I just want to make a profit. Like, I don't want to make a profit. Like, if you are just trying to get into it to make a profit, like, right. I, I'm really big right. on the whole, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs and people will talk about it. It's like having value. Like, I want to make things that I would want to buy. Like, the right? shirts and designs exactly. I actually would really want. So, at least I have a market of one. Tim Ferriss talks about that a lot. but um, Market of one, I like so, that. So, yeah, you have stuff like Tim that. Like, Ferris, yeah. Tim, Tim Ferriss, Ferris, Jordan yeah. Peterson books. Uh, any Gary V, right? Gary v. I, I haven't read any of the Gary V books. I need. I know I need to. Um, a really good right one would be um, the E Myth Revisited. I've heard about that one. Yeah, that one's a good one. That one's more about like processes and stuff. Like, if you have this romantic view of having a business and like I'll just kind of wing it and I'll do it and I'll do what I love and do what I love well, that's a good book for kind of grounding you in. Look, that's awesome. They use like uh, an example of a bakery or whatever. Of like this woman making this bakery, but she doesn't know how to do a business. She just wants to make pies for a bakery. Mm, yeah. Yeah, it's a perfect. great book about how to be an entrepreneur, you're going to have to learn that there's separation of roles and that you can do what you love, but you're going to do it from a higher place to make sure you're serving your customers in a way that they'll love what you're doing. Mm. So you can't like me as an entrepreneur there is that point where it's like i love going to these conventions and i love you know wearing the shirts but i also want to own a successful business that helps give people that value of when they're at conventions you're seeing the true point of your business when they're yeah. at conventions they're having fun and even if yeah. i have to sit behind a booth it's like i can live with it if i know that they're out there enjoying and loving serving the shirts, some you know? kind of purpose That's, that in the is end of such it a it's, and, it's, and it's like a high level you know it's that high level thing it's like you know i want them to enjoy it and if it means that self sacrifice and it's that it's that that, that kind of like passion for that and the, the value so that's 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 a big thing emith revisited great book that was a good book good book you know i have uh so for me obviously uh, i don't have an actual uh, uh sh clothing line company right the only startups that i've worked on is uh the real estate which i actually worked with lane and the second one is source view mm -hmm. which is a recruiting application yeah. that's in development right now and for me the recent so the reason i got into the the um, the real estate even though i have you know, jack shit knowledge on real estate is primarily because... Which is fine, by the way. You right, can right, right. I, I didn't expect to know much, but yeah. the reason I got hired on... Oh, not hired on, but I started this with a friend of mine was because I began to hang out with my friend, uh, Adam. You know him, right? Mm -hmm. I, I hung out with him a lot. I met him actually at the restaurant when I was okay. a server. We were both servers at the time, like three years ago. And uh, he, he always told me he was in real estate and he's always doing side hustles. And mm -hmm. he's the first one... Mm -hmm. That even though I've always had entrepreneurial uh, friends, my mom and my dad, both of them are entrepreneurs. They own their own businesses. I know that. Um, 
Yeah, yeah. And my mom actually is a, a management consultant on her own business for companies and, and whatnot, which is pretty dope. She actually teaches entrepreneurism at University of Puerto Rico. Oh, that's sick. Uh, yeah, yeah, which I came to find out two years ago. Before, Prior to that, I was <laughs> kind of like, like mom, my mom does awesome. that. Right, my mom just brings home money. I don't really understand oh, what she God. does. That's but awesome. going back to the subject is that what led me, what, what created this like entrepreneurial fire for mm. me was that when I was meeting with Adam for like a whole eight months, during that time, I said to myself, I think I should dive deeper into like how social media works and how mm-hmm. other aspects beyond just what school teaches you and the mm-hmm. software development yeah. teaches you. So I was like, let me just buy a book, mm-hmm. which was Gary Vee. Uh, I think it was Jam, Jam, Ask Jam, Gary Vee or, yeah, Ask Gary Vee. Girl, and I yeah. also read uh, Leaders Eat Last by Simon Sinek, which oh, I would just Simon, more leadership. Yeah, Simon, Simon right. Sinek has like, yeah, Right, which really is not good. necessarily entrepreneurial, it's just more just leadership that's a, wise. That's a, I heard, but yeah. both of those books and both of those entities, those gentlemen, right, they they kind of like created this fire, this, this mentality of like, okay, let me learn, let me learn, let me learn. And at one point when I was talking with Adam, he was like, hey man, remember that idea you had a while ago? Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, yeah. I was like, we're going to do it. I was like, what, what do you mean we're going to do it? I said, let's do it tomorrow. Let's meet up. Let's talk about uh, our options. Let's talk about how we're going to get investors. And oh, let's sick. draw out a, uh, a business plan. No. Keep in mind, this guy has, I'm not sure how how much older than me, but he's older. And he has, he's had years of experience in not just entrepreneurism, but oh, other like, aspects. Right? Yeah, yeah. So for me, it was more like a mentor uh, ship right type right of thing. not even that just like someone that you could like kind of get this kind of vibe and energy right. and like i could do it i could do it and the moment the fire kind of i keep saying fire but in reality it's how i felt is when he asked me what do i know what can i bring to the table and i said i know a little bit of this or this and that and he asked questions and i kept going on and the more i talked about it the more you're like, passionate i was you realize, you're the, like, i know this because i've been looking at- and by his reaction he was just like Dude, I have no fucking clue what you're talking about, but I know hands down is useful. And as the, the biggest, the best reward or instant gratification was when I was in a room with the investors and these are like top millionaires yeah, and whatnot. Yeah. At oh, the wow. time to me, it was like mind blowing because I've never been in that room with like a bunch of people judging Jeez. you, basing like building a company based on your knowledge. They asked me questions and as soon as I spit my, my, what I know, which I thought was little to nothing, it blew their minds. And I feel like the biggest guy in the room. And That's at the same awesome. time, they're like, okay, we're going to put it into practice. And I have all these people like backing me up. So in my mind, I'm like, I can do this. I can, I can just fucking go for it. I, can, I just, all I have to do is keep practicing and, and keep, keep putting in execution. I mean, yeah. keep executing on what I know and what yeah. I learned to find out better ways of executing and doing that. So yeah. eventually we built that startup. Uh, unfortunately, I had to step back. I was still in school at the time. It yeah. wasn't something that was headed towards something uh, I wanted. Okay. But I was still able to provide consulting service. To this day, I still provide consulting services to 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 them, and it feels amazing. It felt amazing. It led me to believe. It, it made me realize that you're in control if you want to if you want to be yeah. a better asset to the world or whatever oh, yeah. it is team that you serve. So okay. that led me into into creating. Uh, excuse me, this other startup, SourceView, yeah. which you is saw that was nothing was holding you back. You could just I, yeah, yeah, because I was thought, and, and this is a, a very ignorant thought process that I had a, at a since a very young age. But I always thought geniuses were born, which to a certain degree mm. they are. Talented people are born. Yeah. Uh, business owners are just born, and yeah. I never thought and you're to like, myself. That's not me. That. That's not me. I right. can't do it. That's not yeah. But I but I never realized I had so much experience as a as a kid doing that for example i remember i and i bring this up during interviews now when i have like job offers or whatnot or just general interviews of my experience i remember as a kid i think it was in fourth grade or fifth grade i would always have you watched the show codename kids next door yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. right that was a shit that was my shit as a kid i made a neighborhood team as the kids next door we were like eight or ten people (laughs) ten kids i say people we were we were youngins and i was quote unquote, you can't see me where I was listening, but quote unquote, the leader. Yeah, yeah. I remember I made business cards, I made oh, flags, I made logo. I, and God. for some reason, That's I was so, so passionate yeah. on making this team. And I 
Shit, you know, if you asked me what we did as a team, I couldn't answer because I can't remember if it was anything of value. That's so badass. But dude, I would have been in that team. I would have been like, fuck yes. Dude, I remember we went to the parks close by, which were a few. We planted our flags everywhere. And I would say like, hey, Jose or whatever, or or Bobby. That was one of my buddies uh, at the time. I'll say, hey, Bobby, can you just post up over there? I'll give you a walkie-talkie. We'll talk. We'll see who's ever coming in that area. It was stupid. But thinking, thinking back to it now, I'm like... What, what what led me to not just I, create a group? What was I on? Right, right. <laughs> and, on that and, kid enthusiasm. Yeah, dude. Right. These, what's in this Kool Aid jammer? This is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. But, but the, those jammer. are the, 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 the memories. Be, and also, what I told well, you, I already told you this, but when I sold Xboxes, like yeah, I would buy them yeah, and flip yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, I remember, yeah. That was fun. And I honestly didn't do it for the money. I did it because I love the, the so art of figuring. doing that. The process of like, Buying broken something that something that you would think is broken, yeah. and I'll be like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll pay twenty dollars for it, and I'll fix it for less than a dollar's worth, and flip it for ninety dollars. God bless. And the money coming in, I was I wasn't like, oh yeah, I'm making a lot of money. But to me, it was the fact that I was able to make to money, it, yeah. not by just getting a job out of college and just you know going to corporate mm. work. I, I was able to make money on my own terms yeah. on something that I didn't know at the time. And you liked, and you exactly. could do. So all these things, I added them up during my, my experience doing the, the real estate startup, and I realized, I think I've always had it's this It's been shit. in you. It's been, I just never acknowledged which, it. Which, I, just super fast, super fast aside, is that the, that idea of thinking that people are kind of born with these certain things that they're better mm-hmm. at, or you're stuck in one thing. Um, if people want to Google it, just Google um, fixed mindsets. Because that's essentially what it is, where people grow up thinking um, if they're good at something, that's just what they're good at, and they're not good at anything else. So super fast, just as an aside, like the whole time you're explaining that, if you Google fixed mindsets, that's what that is. Is like you're thinking, I can't change the way I am. I'm fixed in a certain right. way. There's no way. When in reality, you can learn anything in you're, the world. You're literally just constraining yourself mentally what, yep. yeah and, yep. but uh, i yep. didn't i didn't this know mental about model it. that's holding you back yeah. you know yep yep the, the thing is i want to make a point because a lot of people might misinterpret this as me being sad or, or lack of confidence like depressed kind of and not at all i could be i was probably the most boring person in that sense in the sense that i was never like i would never down myself for not being super talented. In my mind, I was like, yeah. okay, you were just I'm like, not the best. You were just okay. more like matter of fact, like there are these people and then there's these people right. and then I'm not one of these people. Exactly. Right. That's when you exactly realize, how I thought When you realize it. in actuality, all this time, I was actually like these people, but regardless, I could learn to become these people because you said you studied. There was that person that you kind of looked up to or was mm. a peer with that yeah. got you going there. Yeah, I felt a lot of times you have a notion of how a process is done. Like, you have a notion that someone can, you know, it's not, it's effortless for some people, right? You look at them as these high beings mm-hmm. that are just gifted, right? Mm-hmm. But in reality, most people struggle in that learning yeah. process, right? Yeah. And they work way harder and you don't see that. Exactly. You don't see that work. And they're just normal yeah. people. And by normal, I mean like approachable and reachable. They're, they're, they're feasible people. You can be that Course. person. And like he said, they're really grinding, but you just don't see you that. Don't see it. Right. Like, and that, you know, that, like you can say that the A, A student, right, in class, you know, you can see his output and just focus on that. Yep. And of course, you're going to see this person who's just gifted Make an and A's. amazing. But in reality, most likely this person's busting ass behind the scenes. Super busting ass. And, um, doing and what that can be you to. busting ass. That can be you. And most, most people can achieve really great things. And also, I want to add this is because a lot of people, and I've met uh, individuals that want to start the company, and they, they tell me about their struggles. Yeah. And the first thing I tell them or ask them, when regardless of what kind of struggle it is, just the fact that they're having a struggle to keep moving on, okay. the first thing I tell them is, like, do you really believe in this idea? Do you really love, do you have a passion for this problem, to solve mm-hmm. this problem? Mm-hmm. And for the most part, for the vast majority, they just tell me, oh, no, I just thought I could make money. money. Yeah. And for me, for the example, for the real estate, it was I genuinely did it for the fact of proving myself wrong. I okay. did it for that reason and the fact that I was prov- providing value. Yeah, I had a lot of fun providing like social media strategies. To this okay. day, I, I love doing that. Uh, and it's only because I've researched. That's really what it is. I'm not a genius. I just Googled stuff. And s- instead of going out to the bars, I just read that shit. 
Um, but for my second, which is the most proud I am to this day, is SourceView, which is an app develop, uh, 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 application development company in regards to recruiting, especially geared towards students and yeah. co- uh, just companies in general to get hired better. Um, that for me is a passion primarily because there was a time, I, I, I remember to this day, it was like a year or two years ago, a student looked at my resume and he said, you're not going to get a job with that uh, GPA. And I think a month before that, I had gone to a career fair, and it was complete shit show. I remember because I didn't prepare. I had my resume. Where, is that the one where I was there? and We went to class after, or no? I'm not sure because I, I'm not sure it was like because I met you last year, year, right? I met you in not in junior year, like Java. That you had Java class in like well, it could like be, your but early junior, my late kind of junior. Right. So so for Maybe me, uh, that career fair, and I'll just be brief with this part yeah. uh, to go back to the source view. Uh, the reason why it was a shit show is because, again, I didn't prepare, and my resume said literally what every other motherfucker yeah, in there's yeah, resume yeah. would say. Literally exact same. I was just... Junior at the University that, of Houston. That template yeah, yes. is right, predictable. Right. Yeah. But I learned my lesson with that, and when the guy said I would never get a job with that GPA, mm. and at the time, I was like... I was confused. I really lost. I was just kind of like, what the fuck? You're right. Like, and I'm already close to graduating. What options do I have to even continue? Right. I was thinking of dropping out because I was at that point, I was working oh. at HB. They offered me an opportunity. I was like, that maybe. That was a while ago then. It was a while. But I remember I told myself, you know what? There has to be a way mm-hmm. for me to not only stand out, but to be that bullshit GPA <laughs> mentality. And so I hustled, I grinded in the, in the sense, Same. I don't mean to oversell it, but I, I, I genuinely spent a long time. You did the time. work. To... I did, uh, yeah, not just not just uh, glorifying my resume, making it really neat and very uh, stand out-ish. I also got in the habit of getting on LinkedIn uh, way yeah, more yeah. than you, any you other get, social you're, you're platform. You're way, every time I fucking log into LinkedIn, every other, other, other week, I'm like, oh, well, I fucking wrote some fucking... <laughs> Dude, because the power of LinkedIn is yeah. so underrated, especially for students. Networks. Dude, you have no idea. <clears throat> I don't yeah, because me. I don't fucking. <laughs> you got your job through LinkedIn, right? Did you recruiter? No, technically no. Oh, never mind. I got excited. Yeah. But what? Was about to be bad I did. I did go through many recruiters on LinkedIn and got many interviews, and that's without a degree. So. Oof. So. Kill it. So, so yeah. going back. Killing it. Right. Yeah. So going back. Eventually, after that year, I managed to secure. I think it was about five full time offers and three internships. And Oof. not. I'm not bragging, but I'm no, m- yeah. mentioning that because I had a shitty. G- I think it was two point seven eight GPA, which is not shitty. But to I most. I think I'm at like a two seven seven right now. See, uh, but, that, but that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying though. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It, yeah. To the most no, part, GPA a lot of com- doesn't fucking. To no. A lot of companies. Your, your worth ethic towards what you do. Not right, and this showed again. I don't mean to brag about that, but that passion, that that when yeah. I realized that it's up to me yeah. to get a job, yeah. not going to school and graduating and say, okay, right. I'm ready. So, so you went from a, someone saying you were not going to get a job with this GPA to I got five full-time offers because I put in the effort towards making sure I was presentable. Right. and Right, right. Yeah. I prepared everything. And there were times when I would go to career fairs, which I went a lot. There were times I would go to career fairs. I would already know half of the yeah. people t- from those companies the because I already messaged them yeah. on LinkedIn. And there are I people said, who walk in, they're like, I don't even know who's going to be here. Exactly, here. exactly. And then those things helped me out. But because of that, I, I noticed there was a flaw within students, at least in my close circles, yeah. that they weren't hustling as hard or they thought it was too big of a barrier to overcome to get a job that okay. they wanted. So I thought, and this was source view, my company came about, is I have to be able to help them out. I, there has to be a way to let them know that there's a lot more to search, a lot more to gain if they just tried. Thank Thanks, man. Um, so that's where source view came up, and again, that's going back to when starting a business. Uh, I got, I got a little bit. When starting a business, it has to be something that you're. Hey, Link, can you do me a favor? Uh, maybe. Can you turn on this camera again? Yeah. Please it's like me. sleep mode. That I'll tell you right now. Uh, let me finish this real quick. So, anyways, when building a, a business, and you share the same thoughts as, and beliefs as I do, is that Thank you. you have to be passionate about the subject or about the problem that you're helping solve. For you, you were like. I've had enough of this bullshit uh, fashion that they have here at anime conventions. Yeah. And for me, it's like the most students are unaware of how to get a, a proper job. I'm not saying I'm an expert, I'm a genius no. or whatnot, but I, I noticed within my circle, and if a company like what I'm building was available when, during my time, it would have been so beneficial. So mm. that's my goal, that's my passion, is to help Especially students helping get students kind of right. just 
launch off their career, right? Right. So going back to the camera thing, so believe it or not, the only reason cameras can't record over 30 minutes is because if it is over 30 minutes, it's considered, I think, a, an actual movie and the rules don't apply the same way. I, f- I forgot what the organization is, but so basically it's something it's a as camera and not a video. It's something as silly as that, mm-hmm. like to the point where no cameras are allowed to record over thirty minutes. Some cameras have hacks where they record over thirty minutes, but every thirty minute it cuts to a new clip. Gotcha. Yeah. So okay. that officially, you can probably configure it on that camera, maybe. I, I can. So I, I can do the hack, but yeah. uh, honestly, so I don't ridiculous. haven't done it. What's that? Ridiculous. It's crazy because I read about. it. I was like, it's because the first time I did a podcast, yeah. which is this not my first this is the first release but not my first podcast interview style yeah. if you want to hear more about those i'll hmm. leave it in the descriptions on my youtube channel uh you can just search juan Rivas. but anyways yeah. um when i did those first i realized that my camera was stopping every 30 minutes i was like this is what very annoying are you yeah. gonna have issues editing the video later because of all the, the breaks in the video i uh, know according to the audio and having them match no this two. is this is the beautiful thing about i'm sure in other softwares do the same thing but about adobe premiere pro i think final cut does the same thing i would imagine but you, I can post that video, my phone's video, you know, like, this audio. Yeah. It'll pair them up. Gotcha. That's cool. Yeah. There'll be a there'll be a blank a black uh, air, uh screen for yeah. the, in the in the betweens. Yeah, yeah. Unless that camera's already recorded, which it is. So I'll yeah. just swap cameras. And how does it do that under the hood? Gotcha. Like, is it using audio from audio, that? Yeah. Okay, and it's basically two streams of audio. If it matches, then hey, that's the point. Because right now, as you can see, well. C- considering the microphones as one audio source for the for the sake of this conversation, right? This one audio source, that camera is an audio source, that other camera is an audio source. Yeah, so those three that. are capturing the same audio, yeah. right? Three times. conversation, right. right? So it'll just pair with that. Yeah, it's that pretty sense. cool. That's why you know did you know that that's why movies when they they have those big uh, things, the uh, the squares or whatever they mm-hmm. clap, yeah, the cut, yeah. That's because with that clap. All the musical instrument, not musical, but the, all the audio uh, instruments and devices can pick sync. up that. Yeah, yeah, isn't yeah. it crazy? Jesus I didn't know that. Yeah. Christ, I, mean, I thought it was just for a show or some bullshit. I need a bio break. I'll be back in two seconds. Yeah, go ahead, dude. Hey, I want to go back to one more thing, entrepreneurial, yeah. and yeah. then no, I did. I had two points. I forgot, but anyway. Oh, we're, this is a side note. Something uh, oh. I'm not sure if you've been paying attention to to this news, but do you know Alibaba? Oh, I love this one. I'm sure you get. I know. I know of Alibaba. Why, yeah. uh, Alibaba? For those who don't know, Alibaba is a huge. Um, was it like a where like a? It's like a Chinese. Right, it's a Chinese like Amazon kind of, but it's it's uh, the people. If that you know sell what AliExpress products, is, but if you know what AliExpress is, you probably know what Alibaba. Is. Right, but how do I describe it? Like for those that who would not know, it's like a marketplace, a Chinese marketplace for very cheap goods manufactured and and or made in China, right? right. Where so people if, just sell items. So if like you're trying to sell a bottle holder, what some some product, and you want your logo on it, and you want to buy like. Mm-hmm. 300 items right off the bat you can contact the warehouse directly mm-hmm. in china which most most things are made in china and pay them directly which yeah. comes at a super convenient cost uh before a, a drop of uh drop shipping and shopify and all that yeah. uh people would buy from alibaba and ali and they still do but to a lesser extent Trump taxes exports right. or imports even but more uh, and anyways <laughs> alibaba the company <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I think it's worth four hundred twenty billion. If I'm not mistaken. Uh, let me phrase that. Four twenty. Beyond that, so Alibaba. The CEO's name is Jack Ma. Yeah. Jack Ma. Is Jack Ma. No, Did Jack you Ma. know he just left the company to become a teacher again? He wow. was a teacher before he founded Alibaba. He left the company recently, or announced it at least. I don't know when his official. Yeah. Date probably is. making so much money, you can teach. He's worth. Four hundred and twenty billion. Jeez, yeah. it, man. Four twenty billion. Uh, right. That's crazy. I made that joke, man. And he Come left. On. Yeah, I know. But he I, left it's the, the delivery company right now, or not now? Recently, like announced Jesus. to leave. That's crazy. Uh, yeah, yeah. I feel like I just saw like an interview a few whatever it goes where he's like, "Oh, to be an entrepreneur." Have, you, have you seen the video where he's uh uh what's it called doing his uh, his speech or his pitch? I've seen one of his. Uh, I've definitely seen one of them. My uncle, I think. It's pretty cool. Like he has like sixteen friends over, like his small apartment. Everyone like throwing on the couch and the floor, and he's like, "Guys, this is my pitch." Like, can you hear this pitch for you? Like practice run. He did it, and his speech 
was uh well he was good obviously it, it is what it is now but before, oh, is this before the company or yeah or? before before way before the company so this is how he pitched to get it started oh so he pitched to his friends as a practice yeah to, and his friends get, run. Yeah, get yeah. feedback to like yeah. hey does this sound like a profitable idea is this convincing or right not? right 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 and obviously now it is what it is but uh and a lot of people might know this already so I, i'm sorry if it's redundant but for jack ma uh, jack ma sorry prior to him his idea of alibaba he applied to kfc and amongst like over 20 people he was the only one not accepted not even called back Hold on, KFC the chicken. The chicken. K- Kentucky Fried Chicken, chicken said chain. no to the four hundred and twenty billion dollars net worth entrepreneur that is Jack. Wow, Rags of course, to riches, man. That's... And of course, dude, keep in mind, like he wasn't who he was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he built up to be right. the billionaire, and, but, it, but come on, you had to see something. He had it, something it's, in it's him. It's such great. It's just a breath of fresh air because yeah. you see someone failing. Being in in theory in that context, being the black sheep of that group, like right, the yeah, the, the weakest link for a fast food company, right? That's hiring out the ass because of the turnover. Yeah, they said no to him. Huh. I don't know if he did something Amazing. like erratic, like sporadic or whatnot. But either way, it's a great success story, and the yeah, fact that he's definitely. going back to teach because that's his true passion. Yeah, what is, what is he teaching? Entrepreneurship. English. English. Oh, <laughs> maybe that English skill has helped them pitch the idea. Well, the video I, I watched, I think, was in English. Anyways, mm. well, it was before he even pitched it, so that was pretty cool. Mm. But uh, anyways, yeah, he's leaving. Isn't that, isn't that That's ridiculous. Like, uh, I didn't, I didn't uh, know it's, about it's, that. it's noble. It's something that I'm like, yeah. good job, dude. Yeah, like, do, do what you love. A lot of people think it's just about the money. It's like, no, you can have all the money in the world, but if you're not happy, who cares? I think he's, yeah. he had the quote for, I, th- I don't know if it's him or Einstein. I can't remember now, but he was saying... You can't base the uh, intelligence on the task that you give someone. If you tell, uh, I think no, I'm sorry. It was something along the lines like if you give a monkey two options, whether a million dollars or a pile of bananas, and the monkey chooses bananas, it's not that the monkey is an idiot. Is that to the monkey, bananas are more valuable than a pile of yeah. paper in his mind. Right. Yeah. So that's what he talks about. He also talk, I think it's Einstein. Not I think. I think about he's it. calling us monkey. I mean, yeah. I look like a monkey. You know, that's my nickname. And and Nick, uh, when I was uh, younger, I, Natalia told yeah. you this. Mono? Uh, that yeah. kind of like there was this. Uh, have you ever watched uh, Animal Planet, the kids' channel, where they had a Sabu Mafu? It's like this Zabu- lemur. Z- Zabu Mafu, yeah. yeah. I look like that <laughs> motherfucker when I shave. <laughs> when you're to younger, I can see it because your eye, you have big eyes when you're younger, and, I'm, and they're green. Oh, they're both green. I don't think you filled into it's your. It's a fucking lemur, right? Yeah. It's a lemur. Jeez. It's super sporadic. Yeah, you know how honored I am now. But at the time, no, I'm sorry, the other way around. At the time, I was like, hell fuck it, yeah. But now you're like, damn right, I'm the boom. Now I'm like, I wasn't that. You uh, have to put a picture of of the character when you edit this. Oh, I'll do it. I'll I'll add it right You can pop it up. (laughs) Yeah. That's going to be my my new thing. That's going to be YouTube now going forward where everyone's just parroting. It's like, doo. And it's just mm-hmm. fucking pausing. I have this theory. I really wish you have a you have a YouTube channel. No, no, oh, not really. I have I have I have really wow. old recordings of me playing like TF2 mm-hmm. when I was trying to record on like TF2? fraps. Uh, Team Fortress 2. Of course, of it's course. like really old and like Minecraft. Anyway, it's like super old. It's oh, disgusting. It's Minecraft. But um, where people are just gonna realize like I don't know. I I just I hate clickbait shit right now like i feel like people need to go back to just not doing clickbait because they feel like they have to and just let i don't know dude I don't well know. it's keep so in pervasive mind. Wait, wait, wait. and you can't it's, like keep in mind there's a reason dude, there's like... a reason did you know that over 40 hours of video content is uploaded to youtube every minute that's a lot so every minute 40 hours 40 hours Keep I would that. imagine more, but I guess it makes sense. I think it's a minute. I, I, I was going to say second, but that's uh, stretching. I think it was uh, per minute. But either way, either way, let's say it's, even if it were 10 hours per minute, that's insane. Of course. It's kind of hard to process, right? Well, like, the thing is this. You have, like, let's, like right now, as soon as Black He's playing devil's come, advocate for, for clickbait. I want <laughs> you to state your case. <laughs> no, no, I, I really, I really state am. State your because case. Because although I hate, keep in mind, when it's clickbait and it. Uh, what's it called? Uh, it doesn't 
deliver in what it was clickbait. Okay. For example, like yeah, when title. it's a shitty video, even with clickbait. It's like or the clickbait says, "I cut my hand," and then you watch it, you know, and then it's like, and he was like at the very end, right, right. right. Yeah. So that's what I don't like. In other in other circumstances, I see clickbaits where they're like a super gold, uh, super gold, whatever the fuck that means, a gold car, and they're saying the gold digger prank or whatever bullshit or they say I took my car or I spent two million on my car some bullshit like that yeah, yeah. that clickbait if they if the video itself shows the actual car taking it to the dealer whatever the fuck uh, mechanic or whatever and does that mentality I'm like cool you got me to watch it right like why okay. not the clickbaits that you hate are, are I'm assuming which I'm in the same boat as those are are not true the same like this is my lad YouTube, last YouTube video and then it's them just saying I'll be back next week I just yeah. don't like all caps three exclamation points <laughs> or, or the one <laughs> oh what, my God, what, what the fuck BBQ one that saw the day that and thumbnails like what you're saying is yeah. uh, uh, logic destroys MGK and God. freestyle battle and um, it's just a it's just a logic it's freestyle. misleading you, and you, there's you, no MGK in but, it. There's okay, nothing. But going back to that frequency of uploads to YouTube, the problem right. with that there's is that there's so, so much. much competition. Like like right now, Blackout, Call of Duty, I'm talking about Call of Duty Black Ops 4, hasn't come out yet. And I can't even tell you the plethora, the mm. amount of videos that are uploaded yeah. every single day yeah. talking about Call of Duty, yeah. which for the most part, I can't even fathom what the fuck they're talking about different from the other, other 12,000 videos. So the way you get your video clicked is with that enticing clickbait. For example, I'll tell you one that I, that I fell through the crack hole and I was like, ah, oh, god damn it. It was Call of Duty Black Ops 4, it was mm -hmm. gameplay, but the picture was zombie, a zombie and a ray gun. Which, to those that don't know or don't play right, this game, right. that game mode is what actually, in my opinion, is keeping Call of Duty alive. And for the it's most part, it's what sick. I play for. So when I saw that in a what ba what has barely been released or leaked, mm -hmm. I was very in interested. I was like, oh, what the hell? Like, what, what's going out? on? Yeah. yeah, I was like, okay, like, what's happening? So I click it. He, he, show, he just talks about it. It was yeah, photoshopped. Yeah, yeah. Of course. But he provided a lot of value and other stuff. But it, that's the type of clickbait that I don't like or approve. But I, I remember nicer times or easier times. I, I used to have a YouTube channel back in the day, back in like 2006. Um, and to this day, it has like 300 subscribers, a bunch of views. and That's a lot nowadays. Could it it is. What, 10,000 to get ads On this now? channel, I have like 14 or 15. I don't even remember. Hey, 20. I'm one of those. Yes, you You're are. Welcome. Thanks, man. Yeah. You know, my what, girlfriend just subscribed today. You're I was welcome. like, Your I've girlfriend? been on the game oh, for like Oh, my God. Like, like, yo, what the months. fuck? You live here. Yeah, yeah. Well, I should have. You should have taken her fucking phone. You haven't heard Just slipped a no as soon as I released the first video. Like, hey, make sure you subscribe to this link. Yeah, on the fridge. Like, hey, new videos out today. Dude, but back in the day, the videos I posted. Lipstick on the mirror. Right. Subscribe. Please love you. Yeah. Subscribe. I, I, I subscribe, friend. like, like, hey. subscribe, and comment. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you leave oh, a comment. Love you, Kate. Sarah, yeah. Yeah. subscribe. Oh but uh, dude, uh, my last on my other channel, my videos were about. Um, they weren't consistent. They were just random. Like as, as far as consistency goes, I had three videos on how to download. Uh, which I'm, I'm not. I shouldn't be proud of. But I was uh, teaching people how to download pirated movies uh -huh. on, through torrents. When at the time, like even LimeWire was still around. Gotcha. Um, and I was showing them how to go to Pirate Bay and you know, all that sort of yeah. stuff. How to download, That's how to fine. play those videos, and those videos. I've never used Pirate Bay in my life. I buy and own everything that I use, <laughs> software related. Dude, the anyway, NSA is hearing yet. and they, they <laughs> detect sarcasm now. Haha, <laughs> the nervous laugh. <laughs> 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 Anyways, um, what's it called? So those were my videos, dude. That was pretty much uh, it. And it got, got traction, but I had no thumbnail ideas, no uh, Right, I mean, it was 2006. Titles. A whole different time. Now it's like right. a cowboy fucking doo doo. Thumbnail, thumbnail. Or click, click, the yeah, ones like that I hate the most, and you see it on Instagram and yeah. Facebook, is when, you, when you're when you hovering over the video and all you see is like an almost half-naked woman. And when you watch the video, obviously, Bobby, I didn't click she it for like that reason. She has like two coats on, like but no, no, but like nothing related to that at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's just like a, a one-frame clip at the end. And it's like, yeah, oh. yeah. But it, it's, and also that, that new tactic on, uh, I say tactic because everyone's adopting it. To a certain degree, I see why. But they, the video has like banners up top. Yeah. And they have like a shit ton of emojis on it. Like oh. right off the gate, they'll say like, I can't believe he did this. And a bunch of like, like crying emoji crying laughing or like. 
or so something like that and it's it's stuff that in my mind i'm like it's very condescending almost disrespectful to whoever's scrolling they're like is this really how you need to grab my attention that's but it works unfortunately that's the that's the works. big that's the big crux of the argument is like as long as people are still clicking on clickbait it is effective and what you would need to do to get into it now right you can't the the other strong argument for clickbait like the arg- argument for clickbait is that let's say you do have honest good quality and value that you could give to people like content they're not clicking it unless it's clickbaited so to get them into your type of things to where maybe in the future you, you the wouldn't trend. need to it's so you would, you would have to clickbait so they could get into your videos to begin mm-hmm. with right. and then you're giving them that content that value to them and all that but it's like you have to play the game because it's the game you're right gonna now. fall behind yeah yeah, yeah. that's just i hate it play. or it could be detrimental right because you're so you could some people will call you a sellout of, if you weren't doing it before and you're doing it now people will be like, that, it's just so saturated you lose trust and and titles anymore right, right. If, if the right. title seems too grand and yeah like jose or promising like you're not saying it was like fuck. on it yeah. i do that all the time i see a title i'm like this seems fishy this seems well you know, like as soon as uh mgk released mm-hmm. oh, as soon as the disses were out oh like, they all fake. kind of like eminem's oh. diss um, yeah, yeah. Th- 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 what i do hate the most name for it is those videos that are not so they're Double not fake grave. but they're not really saying the truth and let me explain what that what i mean by that it's like for example this very example happened in real life when mgk uh heard uh or after eminem released kill shot the mm-hmm. diss to mgk if you're mm-hmm. not aware just Google Eminem kill shot and you'll <laughs> you'll find out what I'm talking about. So after Eminem released that song, MGK obviously didn't release a song, but a bunch of videos showed up about MGK responded to Eminem. And Double grave. They even had like little clever titles of the right, yeah, right. And you on. click it, and it, but the video is the guy saying, "Oh, Eminem." By, and by what they mean by MGK responded is like MGK tweeted out something, but not necessarily a rap. Not necessarily yeah. bars, not necessarily even directly Response against. It's just saying like he responded to something. You're trying to and get a then click. They insinuate what that could mean in MGK's head. In reality, none of that shit happened. But it's just fan theory at that point, so it's not wrong. But it, I fucking hate it because I'm uh, like, they're like Dude, reading too much into something that isn't right. Don't post a video if you don't even have the actual information. You're, you're just, just milking, trying to get you know milking the. Yeah. Uh, right, yeah. and that's the problem. That's that's one of the problems. Uh, the good thing is that. Uh, uh, which, believe it or not, it ha- holds a lot of weight. It's on YouTube videos, the like and dislike button. Mm. Uh, when you download a separate, I don't even need to get into details, but basically, YouTube detects the legitimacy of a video based on the likes and dislikes, okay. the ratio. Um, or at least to be, uh, uh, what's it called, it's analyzed factor. afterwards. Yeah, so, for example. Something. So, if you had like 2 million, or let's say 10 million views and you had a negative ratio, would that negate the amount of views you had? YouTube like, wouldn't post it up top. When you search for a oh, with the algorithm, stuff. but so you be like get a the couple money, pages right? down. You might if, if the people... video is is thumbs down because you did something outrageous. And by outrageous, I mean like Not you even hit someone it. in the face or something. Oh. Obviously, that's like red negative. It doesn't right, matter right. what I'm it is. Think of the word so, red flag. So if it's if it's reported negative ratio on likes or reported, and you have a hundred million views, would you still get that? set in stone amount of money that people will get at 100 million views. The money isn't, the, isn't, isn't I don't know based. policy for YouTube, you know? Well, I don't know how they do things. There's way too many policies. And right now, honestly, if, I, if as soon as I give you one answer, there's someone <laughs> going to be screaming at the edge of the seat that really knows he's going to be like, no, you're wrong, and blah, blah, blah. And yeah. YouTube has to get against okay. the creators. Like the other day. Um, so do you know? Uh, that's actually a great segue. Do you know who Jake Paul is? The Paul brothers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jake I'm Paul. Pieces of shit, Paul. right? Anyways, no, no. But hear me out. Okay. There's another YouTuber, very famous. He's incredible at making documentaries uh, okay. to the point where he gets a, a insane amount of million of view, millions of views per video. Anyways, this guy's named Shane. He's doing a documentary on Jake Paul. It's okay. called The Mind of Jake Paul. And the first uh, video he released, it's an eight-part documentary. He just released the second one yesterday. Oh, wow. You can tell I've been watching this. <laughs> the first video he released got, I think, 11 million views within a couple of hours. Like, wow. insane. Anyways, but you all know who Will Smith is. Mm-hmm. It was his 50th birthday the, the other day. Died. Oh, the yeah, jump, the, the, the Fresh the, Prince the, of uh, Bel-Air. Jump, uh, yeah, the Fresh Have you seen that, though? The, he did it live, the helicopter jump. 
on anyways the record. it was actually pretty cool so so that video so that I'll video was trend the will smith uh released a video on um, the same day and his video was ranked or on trending number one oh, wow. which with that being said it grants you a lot of views and yeah, whatnot. Yeah. But a lot of people, uh, YouTube received a lot of backlash because they noticed uh, that they were just picking mainstream media over genuine good creators. And I'm not saying okay. Will Smith is not a good creator, but they they put Will Smith at the top of the charts. Because it was Will Smith. Trendy, happy. Right. Well, he's a le- Will Smith. Well, it's a legend. Yeah, he's been around forever. Right. Uh, now uh, Shane is trending number one. But anyways, back to that is that. That's one of the algorithms that YouTube one of the things takes. is that like they're manipulating the views and what's trending and what's on top, and so it's not even. Right. It gets to the point where even if you were successful, they could still be like, "No, we're gonna put Will Smith." Right, now. and the main conspiracy. Not conspiracy. Are you sure though? What? Like, don't don't you know smoke and mirrors here? Like, did you really look that up? That's how their algorithm works, or what works? For the algorithm, who who gets to the top of the the algorithm for filtering on what the top, you see first and the trending? So yeah, for highlighted videos. And the and trending is a combination yeah. of comments, likes, and dislike ratio, views, and view time. Okay, so it's not you, just that; it's uh, uh, the fact that Will Smith is iconic. It's the fact that he probably has more likes. Oh more no, no no yeah of course. Well, well that's the thing though. Okay, it's the thing is fair, that. Yeah. Being number one in trending would allow you to get more views and stuff. Exactly. But what there's yeah. what YouTube users and creators were backlashing YouTube for was that Shane on his documentary was getting way more traction in everything in likes and dislike ratio, comments to out, out the ass, mm-hmm. views crazy within hours and who, view who, time. I'm sorry, t- who, who's Shane? I thought we were talking about Jake Paul. He is made a documentary, he about, made a documentary Jake Paul. about them. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. you got to drop your phone, man. <laughs> uh, Let's it, get back to my game, man. <laughs> uh, what was it? Uh, so, oh, uh, so, going back to the algorithm, Jake Paul, I think, has to. I, I'm, I'm not, I have to look this up, but I think he had the record or had one of the most disliked video of all time. And he still got monetized. No, no, that's Logan Paul. That's a brother. Uh, Jake Paul had a music confused, video yeah. called. Uh, Every day, bro, well, or some bullshit even, like that. Let's just not even say it. I don't even it yeah, I don't want to give him clout. Yeah, yeah. Uh, dude, it, anyways, he got the most dislike. is a piece of shit. Amazing. But people were backlashing YouTube because they were like, how does this motherfucker yeah. get all that money just because he, because of his attraction? But it sucks. It's it's, it's rubbish. Just because Vine fame. Well, that, right. that brings my point. Like, it, they probably have a policy. If you get the views, you get the views. Like... That's the thing, though. They penalize other people, but they notice that... I mean, I'm not saying this is true. I'm just saying the backlash comes because Jake Paul, amongst other top... It's like preferential treatment. Exactly. That's what they're saying. It's not... (sighs) That that's a big a, uh, accusation to to put on. A, right. No. Like what, what what Lane's saying is that we got to make sure it's not. Well, just... I'm saying legally they can't have biased algorithms, right? They well, have to well be... they're a private company, bro. They can do whatever yeah, they, they want, dude. It's, it's like this, oh, dude. They could take like... Alex Jones off the platform if they want, dude. Which they did. <laughs> <Alex> <laughs> they, they, they took him nice off name Twitter drop. and took Facebook. Off everything. Anyway. Yeah. Well, but he had they had a right to do that, right? He was being. Well, how about this? They could do whatever they want because they're a private company. Exactly. That says they, how yeah. much influence and uh, is it you have too much co- too, too much uh, value or what's it called uh, you give it too much credit to that when in reality a private company is a private company will defend and protect its business and its revenue especially well, uh, when yeah. that YouTuber makes the most and money and uh, do oh, calculated, oh, 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 calculated takedowns across so multiple platforms even if platforms. your private company is in your best interest to have unbiased algorithms right because as soon <laughs> as hey, wait, wait, hear me out as soon as your 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 clients, right, your users of YouTube or whatever your platform is, it doesn't even have to be YouTube. Yeah. As soon as they see that you have a very biased particular algorithm, they're not going to trust the platform as much in the long run. What if you were a monopoly like uh, YouTube and Facebook? <laughs> what if you were What if you were the only video streaming platform of any importance in all of the world, like YouTube? <laughs> they're not. YouTube is is a huge hub for the biggest videos. But what if I were to say that Twitch is another ongoing video streaming? Um, you know, YouTube is trying to to compete with Twitch and uh, what's the other that. one? What's uh, what's the uh, Xbox Vimeo? Streaming? Mixer, Mixer, Mixer. But that's and, a whole different realm, though. Is, yeah, yeah. Listen, friend. <laughs> I don't know if Twitch compares to YouTube in any 
metrics yeah, you that you'd like to choose. Put the dick fully in your mouth, man. I don't, don't know. Don't foreplay with it. I don't know if. But no, just, anyway, no. I, I get your point. Even yeah, if they're, yeah, yeah. they're monopolized, they're that's huge. The, that's the big. That's even that's more big... of a point of. All right, okay, this this I'm gonna segue into go. another point here. So you have a lot of pressure. You have this huge monopoly on video streaming, right? Not just I brought up you Twitch. You have that responsibility. Twitch has a different kind of yeah. Uh, market. You were, yeah, yeah, market. But anyway, and it's more oriented towards gaming. So let's bring it back to YouTube. YouTube is the center hub for videos in general. Yep. That's a huge amount of pressure. If uh, if you get any kind of negative publicity, especially mm-hmm. for a biased algorithm. Yeah then you can potentially open a gateway for another company to pounce on that. And they can counter market to YouTube saying that their algorithms that's are not truly... Enough. That's not enough, dude. You it's never just... know, but that's a starting point. That's my point. You can leverage that vulnerability in YouTube. Well, they right? could have done you it don't, already. You don't want... If I was CEO of YouTube, I don't want any cracks in my shield, so to speak. Right, right. Because right? if, you, cause if the you're affiliated... The, the, idea, idea, the pretty... idea is if you're affiliated with people who do things that the public sees as outrage or can be outrageous... You, as YouTube, you wouldn't want people backing out from that ad revenue. You wouldn't want big name companies dropping out because you have like, I have Alex Jones on my platform or whatever, just crazy people like that. And so the idea is in their best interest to take those people off because the audience or the people, the public doesn't want that. And then if that's, they did have that's it. That's fine, but I think we're getting off point. Like there's a fine line between someone just being exaggerated in their content right, yeah. and being taken off. But I'm talking more of having an algorithm that doesn't particularly excuse someone a little bit more than another particular mm. person. I'll, I'll right? give you an example. I'll give you an example. Okay. This is the thing. A lot of people get their vid- videos demonetized yeah. because they show a tit or like someone's naked or Not someone. Not even that, but, but it's been shown that actual internal bias of what like the ideology that people have in YouTube have led to demonetization just because of like counter arguments nothing in offense like nothing offensive just ideas and thoughts that they don't agree with internally but hear this That's, out like they have they've shown that but like check this out wait who's Look, shown that YouTube so so I heard this on I think the Joe Rogan podcast where there was a just a playlist that had a video of Sam Harris or like a video a playlist or video and I think someone either fired or demonetized or had their channel something because they just Someone from YouTube saw a playlist that just had a video of Sam Harris in it. And in that video, there was nothing offensive, no hate speech, no nothing, nothing that broke YouTube's terms of service. And they still got, there was some... Demonetized or whatever. Right. Or, or Negative some, some kind of bar chain on there. Now, let me tell account. you an example of okay. when that That's didn't that's happen. straight internal bias. Like, yeah. Now, let me tell you when course, it didn't happen. Yeah, no, I, that brings a point. Logan down, Paul, when he released a Suicide Force video, he mm-hmm, was still making money on that video even after the backlash and it was still trending it was never even taken down by youtube and i'm not saying they did this on purpose but i'm saying that they are very quick to knock down other people except logan paul when he's the one generating so much money for youtube and he has a series with youtube for youtube but that's like a little kid's mentality um about what youtube from i'm talking from youtube's perspective right that's you're risking even though like i'm bringing back the yeah, point yeah, yeah. of being a private company yeah. you're risking an empire that youtube's built okay. by showing bias on a particular account right mm-hmm. this is because is it logan paul logan paul is generating so much money now you're not thinking about long term that's okay. that could potentially show to a lot of subscribers or users okay you but know these are the things it's all dude it's all about interfacing right it doesn't matter if your platform's amazing right Look at Facebook and Mark Zuckerberg, right? He's an alien. Is Is he he an an alien alien or a robot? But anyway, it's all about interfacing to your your users in an appropriate manner, right? And showing that it's not only that your platform's great, but the people behind making the platform's great, right? Mm -hmm. And it's fair and it's trustworthy. And that's my whole point. Again, to reiterate it one more time, is it's safer to play it clean, right? Mm -hmm. And not have these moments where you're... Obviously, doing the corporate template kind of yeah, you know right, right. way of doing things and trying to absorb money, you're showing that you're really caring about value, right? So, you're so that's the things. thing. Okay, so I agree that that's the way it should be done. My argument is that it's not being done. We have yeah, some but do you think that's smart? 
No, it's stupid. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. I'm in disagreement yeah, that it should bait. be done. I'm yeah, just yeah, saying. Yeah. I'm okay. actually. I'm actually. I'm not even a YouTube creator, and I'm still getting mad that Logan Paul was making that much money on the video oh, about suicide. Okay, so I'm misunderstanding when, your your point. Yeah, I thought you were saying that it's private. They can do whatever the fuck they no, want. No, no, I'm saying it that's a have problem. Long term. No, no, that's a problem. Long, yeah. YouTube has received backlash in this realm for the past couple of years it's not mm. new this is logan mm. paul just happened to be one of the biggest mainstream right uh, media hits in, in the recent hit years but it's not the first it won't be the last right. and that's what's disgusting about how they're running it that's what i'm saying i'm not saying they should be doing exactly how they're doing because of the money whatnot right. i'm saying they should make it a lot more fair for everyone the problem is that there's so much automation which is a great segue to my next topic which that yeah uh, a lot of videos get demonetized or banned or whatnot because they use machine learning technology mm. they're to, trying to be very clever with their to be system quick. right and they have so but it makes sense because i mean he, one brought up how there's the sheer volume of how many things is up 40 per do, minute 40 hours, hours per, per minute. minute that's which insane. is nuts you can even like grasp that right right, right. so but, so they have machine learning for all of that, and uh, and again, I, I want I want to it's like just years of content put the hatch right you know seal the I don't know how to say it, but basically, uh, I agree exactly with all you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the reality is that I think just their technology has to advance and right. be more efficient because the up, the amount of uploads is not going to stop anytime soon. Yeah, it's only progressing, and you can't really hire that many other eyeballs to check these out. So right. reality is just the technology so, has to advance. This, this is going to be a little segue into something related, but a little off topic. It's going to be about democracy, right? Oh, and maybe oh one God. of the pit, pitfalls okay. of it, right? All right. So I'm a huge advocate of democracy, right? Okay. But I think this is a perfect way to segue but, into this. No. <laughs> it's a perfect way to segue into this, right? But communism is great. No. So you have... I'm kidding. Uh, Wrong. Look at the web, right? The web freaking... Uh, it, it, it forgot the word I'm using, but it showcases this perfectly. You have Facebook. That's where you go for a general social media, right? Yeah. Then you have Instagram. Then you have YouTube for video streaming. But what else do we have in terms of variety? And I think the whole reason why we don't... Like, we have Uber and Lyft, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like a, a or B. Uber or Lyft, right? Yeah. I think that democracy has given us a lot of great platforms, but also has inhibit it from anyone else getting on the market and maybe giving us a better platform okay you know mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it all comes down to they have these you have these monolithic giants already that have so much marketing going on right and, and they're, they're just, just like so set in stone and so hard yeah. for newcomers to come in and plead their case right for why they're better right but the, so the hard part is that is that the marketing the, the market the, share not just not, because marketing your products like no, no it's not just that it's the fact that that's a big proponent of it right it's because not just the, it's not just the thing it's what i'm getting yeah, at is okay. that facebook as, as, as thing, much as yeah. other companies what they don't show the world or the world is not really in tune is how many companies and small startups they acquire to avoid exactly uh, that competition. Yeah. That's why, Insta that's why Facebook bought Instagram for a billion dollars. Yeah, that's what I was going to yeah, say yeah, yeah. about when Lane was stating his case is like Google bought out YouTube. Facebook bought out Instagram, and it's just mm. becoming bigger, 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 bigger. Twitter bigger. bought out Periscope. Absorbing, and that's what they, they buy out. Uh, either they bought them out or they created Periscope. Periscope, Periscope. is like this other social media yeah, where yeah, you go yeah. live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now guess what? Live is on every other platform. So the problem is, is either they acquire Sna it. Everyone still Snapchat stories too. Right. So so here's <laughs> the thing. Snapchat. So right, and Snapchat is still being used because no, it has so much down, ad it? revenue. Yeah. Uh, ad revenue from. Um, uh, targeting, I think is uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's uh, eleven thoughts. to fifteen to sixteen years. Oh, the the, the like what would you say? Oh, thoughts. <laughs> so isn't it? It depends. Dude. It really of, depends. There's a reason of, Facebook has Instagram as well instead of completely destroying Instagram. Of course, they have money for buyouts. They have better marketing. They have better better well, the, platforms. Right, speak, but the reason they have been, both, like Facebook, could have just said, you know what, fuck Instagram. Let's completely destroy it. Like most of companies course, tend and to do. obviously they had a board, but right? they did it. Be uh, well, they, they did it because it's a whole different, uh, uh, not platform, but a whole different uh, uh, spectrum to dominate in. Yeah, yeah. It's still social media. Well, you mean not they didn't? They did absorb Instagram. Right. No, 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 one thing is just making all one app. 
Instead of right. making all one app, they made it to where they dominated they kept, two different fields. Yeah, yeah, they bought it out, kept it as it was, because yeah, right, right. they saw where it was going. It was right. different, unique. Right, right. Yeah. In the same my, way Google bought out, well, YouTube is its own Goliath, but I see your point. Is a lot, my, my thing is, no it's, competition. it's scary in a sense. It's kind of rhetorical, but it's scary in a sense. Yeah. It's the too fact late. that we have these giants in tech yeah, right, yeah, that yeah. can absorb so many things, and yeah. we don't... We, it's, they're monopolizing it. There's now, no and other way to put it. The, the big thing, too, is that they're not being regulated, and that's one of the big arguments that came out about tech um, is too new, how, yeah. they're, how they're these different platforms all coordinated attacks against a certain individual, and it's like, should they be regulated? Because the thing is, a lot of people are getting a lot of media from these platforms, so it's like, it's not just social media now, it's actual news media. Yeah. And so since they're private companies and That's they can point. choose what they want to show or not, and there's yeah. been yeah. cases of internal yeah. biases, That's it's very, like, yeah. should they not get deserved to be regulated, such as like newspapers or whatever? Dude, the you reality know? is that a couple of years ago, probably like 10, 15 years ago, the media was at the top layer. By media, I mean like news companies, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. The top layer like CNN. All these people were at the top. Ever since Facebook and primarily Google came about, mm. these motherfuckers are on top. Of course, yeah. they're dominating. Like yeah. the top layer of, of the world and how we transmit information and data sits Facebook and Google, yeah. both of those giants. Yeah. And it, beneath them is everyone else. Of yeah. course, it's the sad. And it's going back to your scary aspect, which is absolutely true. It's horrifying yeah. because I don't see anyone even matching them. No. They're already at the top tier, and I don't think they're going away anytime soon. I think Google. I think Google beats Facebook. To be honest, and yeah. this is why: when you make a post on Facebook, you think about what you're putting in that post, right? Mm-hmm. Before you display it to to people, and maybe your common sense isn't as good as other people, and you put something shitty, right? And then mm-hmm. they have that. And Google, you, most people don't know that this shit's being on. Logged into a yeah, server. No, when you when you Google recorded, search, it's checking a database first before going out to the internet. Like you're only, checking Google's. Every query you made in their search engine is going to be in a log in a right. database somewhere associated with your profile. He's, he's Think a, of the power you have against somebody knowing their most private queries about things. Yeah. Right, right, but check so. this out. The the this the, where both of those this is the reason why both of them still exist separately and they don't they, they do compete with each other but they in theory dominate different areas for example yeah. Google like you said search queries if you look if you looked up something weird it's they know about you and they'll show ads yeah, and whatnot there's no filters but so Facebook shows you shows your personality in data. Okay. Shows who you are what you're yeah. into what you're gonna be into eventually which is the scary part yeah. Yeah. And they entice. That's why the whole uh, Cambridge Analytica came th- uh, thing came about because people were outraged that a lot of people that were during the the Trump and uh, Hillary ra- uh, campaign, a lot of people were there, they were originally voting for Hillary, suddenly had a change of heart. Why? Because they got flooded with uh, ads about the opposing uh, team or yeah. whatnot, and they were kind of they were now like, you know what? I'm not entirely sure I believe in what I used to believe, and I want to change. And people were outraged in the fact. When in reality, you should form your own uh, opinion. Well, that's just my opinion. And on get things. unbiased but, media. Uh, right. See everything for. Of course. But, but that's it, the power of Facebook. Yeah. It can mold your personality as much as well, you give in. Well, there's been talk of bubbles, right? Political bubbles on Facebook. Yeah. Right? If I only follow and liberal pages, I'm their, only gonna get their and get their echo chamber. All the fair, right. you can fall on your own like kind of bubble through your trends like yeah. if you follow a liberal if you follow conservative, cur- um, conservative right. then you're getting in this blue or the yeah. red kind of if i have a tumbler or, you know i'm only yeah. getting liberal <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing it's like people that uh that run out and you know this because you run ads on facebook mm. and instagram nice name drop you don't you no don't i'm gonna market, bring that up you did the demographic market to the people that you think will like it you market to the people that already like your competition so yeah. when it came to the campaign, it was very easy. Trump would send, and I'm not Trump, but I'm not saying Trump, but Trump's team or whoever supports yeah. Trump would send ads to people that were voting against Trump just for the sake of either of trolling and going viral or creating this debate about mm-hmm. I hate seeing this post, or second, which is what happened, convincing them that they're believing in the wrong side, which is where the, the you know, if, if it weren't for the politics, people really wouldn't give a shit. Mm. If it weren't because they changed their views, and now, I don't mean to get political again, but 
we, we now have Trump yeah, on, the, cha- on, the, on the, the, the chair. A lot of people are kind of like, oh, I don't like that. Or, or, I can't believe we got to this point. And they're blaming this Cambridge Analytica bullshit because they're like, you convinced all these people the other way around. Right. But in reality, people just form their opinions. If they were that easy to switch back and forth, gotcha. do they really believe in it? That's beyond this. But yeah. the power of Facebook is that if you are considering buying Nikes this weekend, and this is this regarding the Nike uh, uh, thing that just happened yeah, yeah, recently. Yeah, yeah. If you were considering buying Nikes and then you got an ad for Adidas and you were looking at Nikes that cost 120, you got an Adidas ad that cost 80, and let's say you don't really give a shit one or the other, you just thought of Nike first, you're gonna most likely buy the Adidas in the scenario. Just because you're cheaper. And we just haven't even cheaper, talked about sense. Amazon. And that's just uh, a whole database about your shopping habits. Oh, Amazon. Yeah, yeah, Jeff Bezos started. is a Don't beast. even get me started. Dude, you know... Th- what's on the... What's on the... Where, 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 what's on the well, topic? What we got? So... Oh, oh we, we, yeah. we went over oh. everything, dude. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Dude, so no, so Amazon is this in a whole nother niche, right? It has your your shopping, shopping trends. Yeah. So you have your shopping trends, you have your personality trends on Facebook, and then you have your weird quirky learning <laughs> trends on Google, right? I'm gonna Google right. this real fast. So yeah. you have your whole. They know you. If they all combine, they know you better than you know Which yourself. Which they do? They What's do. Like, I'm googling. Whoa. What Come do you on, don't use Google. Use Bing, dude. Come on, dude. That's <laughs> go. I don't want them tracking my. Duck, go. There you go. Um, Dude, the, the thing about dude, this is uh, this is completely irrelevant to tracking. But Amazon, is there? If there's one thing you can learn from Amazon is UX user experience. Yeah. Mm. Jeff Bezos, and I'm not saying he's the one who personally implemented this, but his company their, for the their sake of this. UX is phenomenal. No, th- well, not just that, but the one-click buy. That's just an example of how he built a frictionless experience. Yeah, that's which what I'm saying it's so intuitive to the user. Yeah, there. a lot of people just it goes over the head. They're like, okay, that's Amazon is cool and all, but they don't realize there's ecology behind all these things that makes it easier well, for you to buy stuff. Well, not only just Amazon, everything, right? right? I was telling you about the notification being delayed on some platforms. So you know why the notifications are red? Uh, it's to give you addiction, right? It's like going to, uh, oh, not only red, yeah, but yeah. there's a delay and. The, the reason behind the delay, like, is to get you in the habit of wanting to go there and the see that reward, right? Gotcha. The anticipation, like, being in a slot machine, waiting for yeah. you to, to get that 666 or... Which is or ridiculous. Seven, that, that, you know, matching three row and getting the prize, it's the same kind of psychological effect, logging into these systems and waiting for that red to pop up. Well, also... It, hmm. It's a reward system. Why, and I, this might be, for some people obvious and i don't mean to be condescending but why is fortnite and not necessarily fortnite but why is battle royale so addicting and i'll explain it's because as you play in your mind you're playing with granted for the vast majority of the games you're playing against a hundred people it doesn't matter mm-hmm. though it doesn't really matter you're yeah. playing with a lot of people the game is closing in as far as the map goes so you have you always have having this rush that you have to right. continue moving forward right. you also have the rush that people are eliminating themselves uh, others each other left and right you have to complete continue to keep Hunger going games. and mm-hmm. the, this the kicker this is what ecology really hits it's when you're seeing that marker of people dying and you being Number fifty alive, number thirty alive, mm-hmm. number twenty it's alive. It's like the jackpot. You want to get you, that number because you're mine. You you're like, I'm so close. Yeah, I'm so close. Mm-hmm. I'm so In close. In reality, like one out of fifty times for most players, are, are right is your chances of winning. What this. Fortnite dominated is that they released it for free. Gotcha. Play well, uh, and, PUBG. Well, that's, that's a trend in a lot of game recently. Game, in that purchases, you actually end up making more. If you make the game skins. free, you get more Cosmetics. users. You Microtransactions. Get, yeah. D- did you know that uh, Fortnite in a given month made over, I think it was a month or a quarter, made over $350 million? And that's it. And keep in mind, for those listening, Fortnite is completely free to play, at yeah. least the Battle Royale mode. The only way they make money is if you buy costumes or certain uh, uh, equipment or, or bullshit in the Dance store. It does way not cheaper enhance than the, your game than whatsoever. Than a game, yeah. It doesn't well, enhance your game whatsoever. Way cheaper initially until you get hooked on the game. And that's then the problem. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, that's what I'm saying. You, like, yeah. And, you and end up paying money. Same thing like League of Legends. Like, League of Legends probably makes it. That's a perfect makes example, a actually. a ton of money yeah. from the skins and cosmetics. You, you know and who got shit for this strategy? Mm. Uh, for th- it's called the microtransaction. Yep. You know who got shit for this? It still gets shit at this other company, but the yeah. main company they got shit on because it hit ma- uh, mainstream media is uh, Call of Duty. Yeah. Mm. And that's not the company, but I think it was Treyarch, if I'm not mistaken. But, anyways, they're. 
there was a leaked document or whatever about a patent that they had proposed and it got approved, I think, um, for whatever company was making Call of Duty at the time, where they were making it uh, their idea, their system that, let's say you're pl- you're playing for the very first time, level yeah. one. You play in your first game, with beginner's luck, and you kill 20, you died once. You did amazing, yeah. amazing g- game. The next game is going to put you with people up to that level. Yeah. But you're going to suck because you just got lucky the first game. Now, okay. what the game is going to entice is that you are not well equipped to oh beat them. So you need to buy into God. these uh, uh, ch- the ch- I'm sorry the ch- buy into the chances of getting better guns because in the game you can't just buy the gun you want yeah. you get you get like a kind of like a like a slot machine type of deal where you say I'll pay this amount and hopefully I get something good Jeez. which creates that like gambling e- effect in the background now the reason why they got shit on it's not because they did it it's because it went public that they were doing it mm. and people were already having conspiracy about this. So yeah. the fact that they went out and that they, they denied that this was true, but it was still happening, is why it was such a, 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 big, a blow. Yeah, I mean, isn't that what happened with like, the Star Wars game? Yes, I was going to say, that was the other company, yeah. EA. Yeah. Uh, Activision. Yeah, I, I mentioned yeah. EA, though. EA is known for Act- it. Event. Yeah. Uh, didn't their comment get the, the, the Well, they're doing history. Anthem and people are hoping, uh, I think it was acquisition age of war or something i think uh dragon age or something oh. I, I remember like people saying the first and second one or, or something my facts may be off but anyway the whole point was they originally were really well thought out and you know fair platforms and then later they introduced the microtransactions mm-hmm. and ea sports is actually um i believe they did destiny i think they're the same games that did that activision activision did destiny i know because activision, of the, the starcraft yeah. Bungie, and Bungie. all the battle.net no. blizzard well, activision, because yeah. activision blizzard yeah so bungie mm-hmm. is the studio that worked with activision to make destiny or whatever that's why yeah. i said fucking my launcher so, for yeah. battle.net you know another game that was very successful with the microtransactions? It's not for console. At least I don't think so. It's for mobile. Neopets. Um, Angry Birds. Ne- well, that too, but Candy Crush. Wow. To yeah. this day, yeah, it's still played and makes so much money. And it's mm-hmm. free. Yeah. But it's the thought process of like, oh, I could be doing so much better if I pay a dollar. And it's not a hard five. concept to grasp. It's not this like, whoa, it's... Revolutionary thing, yeah, right? Yeah, it's an easy... A lot of great ideas comment. usually aren't. Right, right. Not a great idea as usual. I yeah. think Tim Ferriss always talks it's about a, how... I, um, think, uh, I don't mean to cut you off, but I think nah. it's a natural system that evolved, right? Because back then, you didn't have platforms to be able to do microtransactions, right? Back then, you just had games on disc, and that it's, was it. It's, it wasn't easy to throw and out And the DLC thing is, like, and, Battle Royale, like, grew up from, like, what, H1Z1, and um, what was the other game before it? It was, like, mods of, like, games. It was, um, it wasn't H1Z1. It was, like, something else where it was a mod of a game. And it was a battle royale, hmm. but um, it just grew into like I like all these battle royale games existed. They were a thing. Like H one Z one is the one I keep going to, right? I and then other it. ones, yeah. and then PUBG, obviously, which is like they're becoming a giant esports. Like there's a ton of stuff going on, and then now you have Fortnite, which exploded on. And I guess the big critical acclaim for it, or what really brought it into the super duper mainstream, is just how free it was and. The, and, the, and the building, the artistic, the works. artistic. Yeah. I, I credit a lot of it to the the artistic of it, the That's artistic true. elements. It's because like you go, you compare you compare PUBG to Fortnite, and it's like one of them's a lot more cartoony, happy, ha ha, fun, and then yeah. the other one's like more Call of Duty. Yeah, Call of Duty wanna be because now look at PUBG. That's all I can think of. Right, right. The the graphics aren't even come on be honest like the graphics aren't even up to par to Call of Duty right yeah because they've yeah. been around forever no, it's more and gritty and then yeah. the Fortnite's more fun employ that's how you have kids that are like ten to fifteen playing into Fortnite and asking for credit cards to go buy skins oh celebrities. yeah celebrities you have yeah. celebrities yeah. playing that's that, that's actually a good point and they probably did design it to be toony for that reason and because it'll be approachable they play to it yeah I mean, it'll be approachable to all age ranges which but, it is but it's yeah ridiculous. uh but i do notice there are a lot of little kids that play that game oh and, yeah and yeah. it just They'd takes christmas voice, voice time chat. to you know in that update for them to really you know how many gift cards are gonna sell for christmas <laughs> oh well, yeah. little Timmy likes that new game, the the Fortnite. When you build forts, I'm gonna get him a twenty dollar gift card. Yeah, 
All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Endless Thoughts with Lane Hensley and our guest, Marcial Pimentel. Uh, we just talked about his company, Weep Shirts. If you want to go check them out, you should. On our Instagram, is going to be Weep Shirts. Yep. And for your website, is weepshirts.com. It's just weepshirts.com, yeah. And I'm on all my social media, is just The Real Mars Bar, Twitter, Facebook, or Twitter, Instagram, everything, just The Real Mars Bar. I'll leave it in the description for both the podcast and any other platform that you're watching or hearing this on. Again, thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.